Once an ordinary librarian in his previous life, our hero met his demise in a fire and found himself transported to a foreign world teeming with dragons and demons. In this realm, martial artists were highly esteemed, but he ended up as an ineffective teacher. While others who traversed into a new world typically gained unique talents that transformed their lives, he seemed destined for failure and on the verge of losing his job. Ranking at the bottom in the teacher qualification assessment, he faced expulsion from the academy unless he could successfully recruit students. Zhang Xuan, our protagonist, a striking red-haired man, couldn't even access the book vault, as others deemed him unworthy and questioned how he managed to persuade their young lady to become his student, despite his perceived weaknesses. Despite these challenges, he held firm to the belief that weakness was a sin in this world, and the only way forward was to become strong. With an unwavering resolve, he was determined to alter his fate and earn the admiration of others. Miracles abound in life, and one unfolded for him when he discovered his unique ability, the Library of Heavenly Path, an expansive dimension adorned with floating slabs and books. This extraordinary library not only unveiled the vulnerabilities of humans and objects, but also autonomously crafted flawless martial arts techniques. Empowered by this newfound talent, he felt it was the opportune moment for his resurgence. Zhang Xuan, armed with the ability to discern others' weaknesses, cleverly used this insight to forge connections and friendships. Consulting numerous students, he unveiled their hidden issues, from injured limbs and armpit discomfort to dull acupuncture points. His perceptive nature even allowed him to detect past emotional wounds and relationship humiliations, leaving others astonished. With this unique skill set, he embarked on recruiting students, offering lessons, nurturing the formidable, and disseminating his teachings to the world. The impact was profound, with people bowing in respect to the man who had not only perceived their vulnerabilities, but also empowered them to rise above their challenges. But numerous troublemakers sought him out, accusing him of coercing students to join him and tarnishing Hong Tian Academy's reputation. Some even went as far as attacking him, but he effortlessly subdued them, swiftly defeating them with a single move. His aspiration was to liberate himself from the constraints of this world, ascend from mortal to immortal, and ascend to the pinnacle through formidable battles. The world resembled those depicted in novels, where martial artists commanded respect and strength dictated supremacy. Anticipating a life akin to a novel's protagonist, he foresaw a journey involving time travel, transforming into a wretch, facing rejection from his fiancée, and ultimately staging a triumphant comeback to silence his detractors and claim his deserved position atop the world. However, reality took an unexpected turn, thrusting him into the role of a pathetic teacher, the weakest within the academy. Outside the first classroom, Zhang Xuan brandished his knife at a captivating girl with violet hair, coercing her to become his student. Pompously declaring himself as the academy's most renowned teacher, he faced skepticism when the girl questioned if he was Mr. Lu Shun, the top teacher. Defiantly asserting his superiority, he proudly revealed his name, only to receive a slap in response. Despite urging her to reconsider, she dismissed him as a fraud and left without a second thought. Zhang Xuan had gained notoriety for driving one of his students into qi deviation, resulting in his classroom being devoid of any children. Universally despised and labeled the weakest teacher, the stress became too much for him to bear. Seeking solace at the bottom of alcohol, he eventually succumbed to the pressures of life, ending his own existence. Now, the protagonist found himself inhabiting his body, left to clean up the mess he inherited. Compounding the chaos, expulsion loomed if he couldn't recruit a student that day. Despite having to sacrifice his dignity in both his current and past lives, he resolved to find a way to entice someone into his class to salvage his job. Suddenly, a pink-haired girl with deep brown eyes approached, inquiring if it was Mr. Lu Shun's classroom. Surprisingly, Zhang Xuan had switched the door plate to that of Lu Shun's, and his ruse succeeded as another student arrived at the classroom, offering him a chance to secure a new recruit. With a charming smile and a handsome demeanor, he extended a sweet gesture and asked her if she would consider becoming his student. Her eyes sparkled with admiration as she praised Lu Shun as the most incredible teacher in the academy, expressing the honor she felt in being his student. However, Zhang Xuan dismissed this sentiment as foolish and naive, contending that choosing a teacher was akin to selecting a pair of shoes, fit was crucial. In his view, if a teacher's methods didn't align with a student's learning style, the effectiveness of the instruction would be compromised. He argued that even lesser-known teachers, whose methods resonated with a student, could yield better and faster results. The girl, head bowed, disclosed that her brother had conveyed a similar perspective. Yet she remained unsure about the type of teacher that suited her. Zhang Xuan asserted that a teacher's role involved propagating doctrine, imparting professional knowledge, and resolving doubts. Boasting about his position as a teacher at Hong Tian Academy, he declared that he couldn't stand by when a student was in confusion. 
offering assistance, he proposed to evaluate her capabilities and recommend a suitable teacher based on her strengths and needs. With clenched fists, she assumed a determined stance, swiftly executing a series of actions that eluded his comprehension. Despite being unable to decipher her movements, Zhang Xuan recognized the universal appeal of flattery. Deciding to play the role of a fortune teller, he aimed to deceive her. Once she completed her actions, she relaxed and inquired about his assessment of her cultivation base. Wearing a comical expression, he asserted that her foundation was rock solid and her talent was exceptional. As per his keen observation and analysis, he went on to label her a prodigy, praising the unwavering steadiness of her lower body and the seemingly limitless strength in every movement. Zhang Xuan encouraged her to persist in her diligent cultivation, predicting a bright future ahead. However, his attempts at trickery crumbled when she disclosed that her legs had been injured previously. Shockingly, a physician had informed her that she could never make progress in leg training for the rest of her life, catching Zhang Xuan off guard. Realizing that his initial ploy had failed, he resorted to falsehood, claiming he was aware of her injury and predicting an unexpected opportunity despite her leg issues. In response to her inquiries about this supposed opportunity, he confidently asserted a stance, slapped his legs, and proclaimed the adage that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Undeterred, he persisted in his deceit, fabricating a story that only three teachers in the academy could recognize such opportunities, and he happened to be one of them, conveniently mentioning that the other two had ceased accepting students. Recognizing the limited options before her, she turned to him and inquired if he was still open to accepting students. Adopting an air of indifference to fame and fortune, he played hard to get. Swiftly, she knelt before him, earnestly pleading for him to take her as his disciple, and vowed that he wouldn't regret it, and assured him of her unwavering commitment to diligent cultivation. Capitalizing on the success of his ruse, he swiftly produced a knife, dramatically announcing that he had indeed accepted her. Taking a small cut from her finger, he allowed a drop of her blood to fall into an admission token, symbolically marking her as his official student. Meanwhile, she couldn't help but wonder why she had been swiftly accepted, especially considering the earlier statement about him needing to think it over. Her curiosity deepened as she noted that he had his dagger ready beforehand. Despite these lingering questions, now officially his student, she complied when he inquired about her name, Wang Ying. However, her excitement was short-lived as he promptly threw her out of the classroom, revealing that her classes would commence the next day. Back inside the classroom, Zhang Xuan, now relieved to have a student under his wing, casually tossed around the admission token. The weight of impending expulsion lifted, and he reassured himself that he was now secure within the academy. He even assured Zhang Xuan's body that he would lead a good life in his stead. However, as he playfully swung the token, a sudden wave of drowsiness overcame him, and he began descending into a mysterious space tunnel, oblivious to the unfolding events. Upon opening his eyes he found himself standing before a colossal and magnificent gate, dwarfed in its imposing presence. Engraved on the gate were the words, Library of Heavenly Path, leaving him perplexed as he pondered the nature of this enigmatic place. Upon reading the words, Library of Heavenly Path, a cascade of thoughts flooded his mind. He questioned whether he had once again traversed to another world, or if this was a belated welcoming gift from that realm. The perplexity deepened as he tried to fathom why it took the form of a library. Despite his previous role as a librarian in his past life, he hesitated at the prospect of being relegated to the same job in this new world. Driven by a sense of greed for potential benefits, he resolved to enter the library, harboring hopes of encountering a wise old figure or perhaps an intricate system. Upon crossing the threshold, he was greeted by the staggering grandiosity of the library. It sprawled immensely, with floating stone blocks adding to its mystique. The richness of the place far surpassed even the library from his previous life. Although an abundance of books filled the space, their sheer numbers surpassed what his naked eyes could perceive. Amidst the literary wealth, he pondered the possibility of finding something beyond books. In the novels he had read, welcoming gifts often included wise elders and various overpowered items, sparking his curiosity about potential surprises within these walls. After wandering for some time, he came to a stop and stood in place, looking up with a tinge of disappointment. The Library of Heavenly Path offered nothing beyond books, leaving him perplexed about the nature of this supposedly special talent. Contemplating if he was meant to wield the books as weapons and hurl them at adversaries, he found himself at a loss. A glimmer of hope emerged as he decided to inspect the contents of the books, envisioning a trove of superior techniques. However, his optimism was short-lived as the books, devoid of any physical presence, dissipated like mist upon his touch. In shock, he lamented that the books were nothing but illusions, rendering them useless as potential weapons. Sometime later, he roamed the academy, still trying to discern his location, 
as he walked in and out of the library of Heavenly Path mysteriously. Initially dismissing it as a dream, he thoroughly explored the library, only to find it devoid of practical utility. Considering it a letdown, he acknowledged it was lunchtime, but en route, he also pondered ways to employ cunning tactics to deceive more students. Meanwhile, Chao Xiong, a yellow-haired freckled teacher, called out to Zhang Xuan, accompanied by his students. He revealed that it was the day for freshmen to select their teachers and highlighted the students behind him, proudly stating that they had chosen him as their instructor. Curious about his recruitment progress, Chao Xiong inquired whether he had managed to attract any students. Recalling the recent unfortunate incidents, Zhang Xuan cautioned him against boasting, asserting that whether or not he had students was of no concern to him. In turn, Chao Xiong introduced Zhang Xuan, mocking him as the only teacher in the academy to ever score a zero in the qualification assessment, thereby making history. A student chimed in, revealing that a student under Zhang Xuan had fallen into qi deviation, almost meeting destruction. The others expressed the hope that no student would choose him as their teacher. Unfazed by the mockery, Zhang Xuan dismissed them, urging them to get lost and not obstruct his path to lunch if they were finished. Cao Xiong, with a stern expression, questioned if he felt any shame being the infamous teacher in the academy. However, he remained unswayed, pointing out that while he had made history and every freshman knew him, nobody knew Tao Xiong. He challenged him, questioning the source of his pride and stating that he couldn't compare to him. Surprised and bewildered, Tao Xiong concluded that Zhang Xuan had no shame and insinuated that he might be intentionally using his notoriety to embarrass others. At that moment, Wang Ying rushed in, fervently defending Zhang Xuan and asserting that he was actually a kind and considerate person. She shared that he not only accepted her as his disciple, but also encouraged her, stating that with diligent cultivation, she could potentially rank first among all the freshmen. However, her joy was short-lived as her servant, an elderly man, approached, advising her to cease speaking. He reminded her that her brother had explicitly instructed her to choose Lu Xun as her teacher, and going against his wishes to select a seemingly useless man might lead to consequences. The elderly man further suggested that she withdraw from Zhang Xuan's lessons, before her brother discovered her choice. Pointing at Wang Ying, Chao Xiong questioned Zhang Xuan if she was his newly recruited student and mocked the possibility of her intending to withdraw, insinuating that he might end up with no students at all. The servant, holding Wang Ying's hand, swiftly appeared in front of Zhang Xuan and declared that she had decided to withdraw from his lessons. Remaining composed, Zhang Xuan turned to her and fabricated a story, claiming that numerous individuals sought to become his students, but he had turned them down. He asked her if she was prepared to relinquish such a unique opportunity. Then, addressing the servant, he emphasized the potential repercussions on their reputation if she were to withdraw, questioning if he could bear the responsibility if no other teacher were willing to accept her. Zhang Xuan assured him that Wang Ying possessed great talent and would thrive under his guidance, emphasizing her importance as a valuable asset. However, Chao Xiong intervened and proposed to take her as his student if she withdrew from his lessons. Zhang Xuan resisted, accusing him of publicly snatching his student and threatening to report the incident to the student affairs office. Unperturbed, Chao Xiong challenged him, suggesting a competition between them. He pointed out that academy rules permitted teachers to compete, allowing students to make their own decisions. Zhang Xuan deliberated on the situation, but recognized that he stood little chance against Chao Xiong. Despite the latter's obsequious personality, his teachings and cultivation base surpassed Zhang Xuan's. Chao Xiong, reveling in the opportunity to mock him, questioned if he was afraid to accept the challenge and goaded him to participate. Feeling cornered, Zhang Xuan acknowledged that if he didn't take up the challenge, Wang Ying would likely withdraw. He felt that flinching at this moment would jeopardize any future attempts to recruit students. Thus, he reluctantly accepted the situation, realizing that this was a critical juncture. A large crowd gathered in the training field to witness the duel between Zhang Xuan, the bottom-ranked teacher, and Chao Xiong. As per the rules, they were to provide advice to each other's students on weaknesses, and the one guiding the student toward greater progress would be declared the winner. Wang Ying took the lead, positioning herself in front of the force measuring stone, ready to deliver a punch. With swift movement she struck the equipment, and after the attack, the number 53 appeared on it. Upon witnessing her attack, Chao Xiong astutely noted that while her punches displayed considerable strength, her lower limbs were weaker, suggesting a possible injury. This revelation left Zhang Xuan shocked and perturbed, beads of sweat forming on his forehead. Chao Xiong's ability to discern her injuries after just one observation left him anxious, contemplating the challenges that lay ahead. In the midst of the duel, Chao Xiong swiftly approached her, 
whispering to her about a method to enhance her punch practice despite her leg injuries. As they conversed, Zhang Xuan felt a rising sense of anxiety, unable to hear their discussion, and wondering how to respond. Wang Ying, ready to implement the suggested method, assumed her stance. Following the guidance she received, she channeled the force through her legs, allowing strength to fill her body. With a resounding impact, she released all her energy onto the force measuring stone, achieving a score of 63. The students, surprised and impressed, began praising Chao Xiong for the significant improvement in her strength with just a simple piece of advice. As the attention shifted to Zhang Xuan's turn to teach Liu Yang, a white-haired and intelligent student of Chao Xiong, Zhang Xuan interjected, calling it unfair. He questioned why he should lose Wang Ying if he lost the duel while Chao Xiong faced no consequences for losing. Reflecting on this, Chao Xiong proposed a wager. If he won, Liu Yang would become his student. Confident in his victory, he reassured Liu Yang, asserting that Zhang Xuan stood no chance and encouraging him to relax and practice his punches as usual. As Liu Yang assumed his stance in front of the force measuring stone, preparing to deliver a punch, Zhang Xuan grew increasingly anxious. Unable to recognize his boxing technique, he doubted his ability to identify any weaknesses. Liu Yang's movements were swift, creating an illusion as if he possessed six hands, and he was determined to display his full strength. He held a strong conviction that he would rather die than be compelled to have a teacher who scored zero in the teacher qualification assessment. While Zhang Xuan pondered the potential weaknesses in his technique, an unexpected rumble interrupted the duel transporting him into the library of heavenly paths. Within he saw the words, the heavenly path is incomplete floating in the air, prompting him to question their origin and meaning, as they were not present during his previous visit to the library. Abruptly, a book drifted toward his hands, distinct from the others as it appeared tangible. Upon inspection, he noted that the book bore the name Liu Yang. Intrigued, he delved into its contents, discovering that Liu Yang hailed from the Liu family in Xiayan City and was a martial artist at the level 1 breath-gathering stage. The book detailed his cultivation techniques and unveiled his weaknesses, such as excessive strength in his feints, and the paradox of a stronger left arm, despite the focus on the right in his boxing techniques, limiting his full strength. Suddenly, he found himself back in the training arena, where Liu Yang's punch had registered a score of 62 on the force measuring stone. Zhang Xuan, standing at a distance, chuckled, as he had grasped the true purpose of the Library of Heavenly Path. Recognizing that everyone and every technique had weaknesses, and these vulnerabilities were documented in books within the library, he found the welcoming gift exceptionally valuable. Proudly declaring the benefits of being a time traveler, he was ready to showcase what such a unique perspective could achieve. With confidence, Zhang Xuan asserted that Liu Yang had a total of 12 weaknesses in his techniques. However, Chao Xiong and the other students dismissed this claim, as the Soaring Fist was widely regarded as a flawless boxing technique, and even the principal had failed to identify any weaknesses in it. Faced with skepticism, Zheng Xuan declared the duel over and called out to Wang Ying, suggesting they were wasting their time. Chao Xiong intervened, stopping him and requesting him to share his insights. Seizing the opportunity, Zheng Xuan directed Liu Yang's attention to the fact that his boxing technique primarily focused on the right hand, but according to him, it would be more effective to use the left hand. His advice was met with skepticism from both the students and Liu Yang himself, who believed that changing hands would disrupt the entire boxing technique. Nevertheless, Chao Xiong stepped in and urged him to follow Zhang Xuan's advice to bring the matter to a resolution. Despite being aware of Liu Yang's strength, he remained skeptical that focusing on the left hand would yield any significant improvement, estimating that the force generated might not exceed 30 kg. As Liu Yang struck the equipment, Chao Xiong anticipated victory, only to be left bewildered by the unexpected outcome. To everyone's surprise, the force measuring stone displayed a value of 123, a staggering 100% increase in Liu Yang's strength. This unexpected result left others astonished, as even Lu Shun had not achieved such a feat. While Liu Yang struggled to comprehend his newfound ability, Zhang Xuan, unfazed, attributed the remarkable improvement to the Library of Heavenly Path. Addressing Chao Xiong, he pointed out that Wang Ying had shown a 20% increase, whereas Liu Yang demonstrated a remarkable 100% improvement. He challenged Chao Xiong, asking if he had anything further to say on the matter. Unable to refute the evidence, Chao Xiong swiftly utilized an admission token, pouring a drop of blood on it to disassociate Liu Yang from his list of students. He declared that Liu Yang was now free to acknowledge Zhang Xuan as his teacher. As he descended the stairs, some of his students argued against letting Zhang Xuan off easily. However, Chao Xiong harbored a sense of revenge and vowed to settle the score with him in the future. In the meantime, Zhang Xuan handed an admission token to Liu Yang, 
officially declaring him as a student and instructing him to record his identity within it. As the news of the competition between Chao Xiong and Zhang Xuan spread throughout the academy, many assumed that Chao Xiong had emerged victorious against the supposedly weakest teacher. However, when it was revealed that Zhang Xuan had won and managed to increase a student's punch force by a staggering 100%, disbelief rippled through the student body. It seemed implausible, especially since even Lu Xun had not demonstrated such a feat. Upon hearing the news, Zhao Ya, a violet-haired girl, dismissed his success as mere luck and asserted that if Lu Xun couldn't achieve it, then no one else could. Despite her friends pointing out the undeniable 100% increase, she insisted that luck played a role and was determined to expose Zhang Xuan. Her reason for coming to Hongtian Academy was to acknowledge Lu Xun as her teacher, and she found it absurd that someone deemed the top teacher could lose to the lowest ranked one. Meanwhile, Zheng Xuan immersed himself in the books within the Library of Heavenly Paths in his mind, eagerly absorbing the knowledge. Regardless of the martial arts and techniques presented, the library automatically generated books detailing their weaknesses. Feeling invincible with this newfound information, he set his sights on reaching the pinnacle of life. Abruptly, Zhao Ya appeared before him, inquiring if he was Zhang Xuan. Confirming his identity, she mentioned hearing about his ability to increase a student's punch force by 100% and requested his advice to achieve the same. However, he declined, citing his busy schedule. She argued that he wasn't doing anything, but Zhang Xuan insisted he was occupied with recruiting students and had no time for a confrontation with an impolite girl. Frustrated, Zhao Ya clenched her fists and demanded to know what she could do to earn his advice, and he responded by suggesting she become his student. Skeptical, she thought he was attempting to deceive her, but unable to tolerate him having his way, she reluctantly agreed to become his student planning to accept Lu Xun as her teacher later after exposing Zhang Xuan's true colors. Zhao Ya agreed to acknowledge Zhang Xuan as her teacher, but made it clear that if he failed to provide useful advice, she would expose him as a liar. Meanwhile, her friends observed the situation and grew concerned about her impulsive decision to accept Zhang Xuan as her teacher, and decided to inform Yao about this development. On the other hand, Zhang Xuan refused to accept her as a student, citing her bad attitude and expressing a preference for obedient students. Despite her fury, Zhao Ya maintained composure and apologized for her previous rudeness. With sincerity, she once again accepted him as her teacher and earnestly requested his guidance. Zhang Xuan, however, set conditions for her request and instructed Zhao Ya to clean the room thoroughly, ensuring it was spotless. Additionally, she had to clean the bathroom and toilet. If she passed his inspection of these tasks, she would be accepted as his student. Angrily, she admonished him not to exceed his limits but he insisted she leave if she couldn't handle such trivial tasks. Suspicious of his intentions, she believed he was attempting to deceive her. Swiftly seizing the broom, she circled around and reluctantly agreed to undertake the cleaning. Determined not to be seen as a loser, she resolved not to let him off the hook. Upon completing the cleaning, he inspected her work and commended her efforts. Without delay, he tossed a jade token in her direction, instructing her to record her identity within it. While she professed eagerness for his guidance and expressed anticipation of becoming more robust, her primary objective was to tarnish his reputation. Zhang Xuan commanded her to demonstrate her prowess by striking the force measuring stone. While assuming her stance, she was skeptical that he could discern her vulnerabilities from just one punch, yet she was curious to witness his intentions. Concurrently, Zhang Xuan observed her preparing to employ her martial arts, prompting him to access the Library of Heavenly Path for insights. Within, he located a book bearing her name, containing a record of her weaknesses. Identified as the mayor's daughter from Bayou City, she was a skilled martial artist at the pinnacle of the first level of the breath-gathering stage, practicing the Bayou technique. Despite her prominent background, Zheng Xuan perceived nothing extraordinary about her, aside from her notably formidable strength. As she struck the force measuring stone, it registered a surprising strength of 123, catching him off guard. Approaching her with applause, he commended her strength, emphasizing its uniqueness given her lack of formal training and her status as a mayor's daughter. Grateful for the praise, she promptly sought his advice, activating the recording jade crystal to capture his words. Determined to secure evidence against him, she intended to use the recording to counter any disputes he might raise when she made it public, but he moved swiftly and positioned himself directly in front of her, asserting his intention to be straightforward. Despite his assertion that something was amiss with her, her heightened flush was more due to his sudden proximity. Blushing, she dismissed the idea as impossible and accused him of being irrational. Politely, Zhang Xuan clarified that his intent was not to demean her, but to suggest a potential health concern. However, she rejected his claims, 
urging him to refrain from baseless statements about her without sufficient knowledge. Persistently, he urged her not to dismiss the matter outright and requested her attention for a moment. Inquiring whether she experienced a dull pain at the Danzong and Juke acupoints or sensed restlessness during a full moon, turning her entire body red, he revealed intimate details about her that surprised her, as it was her private information. Despite her embarrassment, she inquired if he could assist with her weaknesses, to which Zhang Xuan agreed. He invited her to attend his class the following day, promising to teach her solutions to her problems. Still grappling with disbelief, Zhao Ya hesitated, prompting him to suggest seeking other teachers if she doubted him. Swiftly, she reassured him that she didn't mean to doubt his abilities, and agreed to meet him the next day. Unexpectedly, Zhang Xuan turned to her and questioned whether she intended to keep the audio recording Jade. Hastily, she broke it, apologizing for her actions. Astonished, she marveled at his ability to diagnose her illness with a mere glance and uncover her possession of the audio recording Jade. As he departed, she pondered why a teacher with such evident talent had received a zero in the teacher qualification assessment. Convinced that he was a commendable individual who prioritized values over fame and wealth, she held him in high regard. Meanwhile, Yao Han, a bearded butler from Bayou City, hurriedly approached, calling out to her. Recognizing him, she addressed him as Uncle Yao and inquired about the reason for his sudden appearance. Without hesitation, he promptly questioned whether she had not acknowledged Zhang Xuan as her teacher, unaware that she had already accepted him as such. Turning his attention to Zhang Xuan, he asserted that she was a person of distinction, implying that he was not qualified to be her teacher. He demanded that Zhang Xuan remove her name from his list of students, even going as far as threatening to involve the principal and have him dismissed. However, Zhao Ya intervened, questioning him about his intentions and asserting her willingness to be Zhang Xuan's student. Wearing an intimidating expression, Yao Han questioned if Zhang Xuan possessed the ability to enlighten her and rapidly enhance her power. However, she declined his suggestion and urged him not to persist in pressing the matter. Fueled by anger, Yao Han's eyes blazed red as he demanded an explanation for what Zhang Xuan had done to her. Enveloped in a crimson aura, he issued a death threat, convinced that Zheng Xuan had deceived her into becoming his student. Zheng Xuan refuted the accusation, asserting that it was a significant misunderstanding. In the midst of the confrontation, Zhao Ya intervened, warning Yao Han that he was speaking too much and threatening to cease communication if he continued. Taking matters into her own hands, she seized his arms and pulled him away, requesting his assistance in gathering bedding for her class preparation the following day. As he departed, Yao Han glared at Zheng Xuan, who responded with an irritated expression, clarifying that he viewed Zhao Ya solely as his student. From a distance, Mo Xiao, a student from the academy, comforted his friend Zheng Yang, advising him not to be disheartened just because Mr. Wang had not accepted him as his student. Zheng Yang argued that Mo Xiao was content because he was already his student, but the latter countered by suggesting that there were other excellent teachers available. Zheng Yang explained that they had practiced spear together since childhood. Yet the best spear teacher in Hongtian Academy had chosen Mo Xiao instead, leaving him sad for failing to be selected, while Mo Xiao was jubilant for being chosen. As they strolled around the academy, they came across the first classroom. Mo Xiao decided to enter, but Zheng Yang hesitated. Despite his objections about the classroom's appearance, Mo Xiao insisted, dragging him inside with the belief that the teacher might be skilled in spear techniques. Inside, they encountered Zheng Xuan, who inquired if Zheng Yang wanted to become his student. Mo Xiao nodded, asserting that he excelled in spear techniques, and requested Zhang Xuan to provide guidance. He accepted their request and instructed them to demonstrate their abilities. Mo Xiao pushed Zhang Yang onto the stage, reassuring him that it was a simple task. Zhang Xuan, surprisingly pleased by the unexpected arrival of another student, eagerly awaited their display. Despite the subpar classroom environment and Zhang Yang's initial skepticism about the teacher's competence, he decided to showcase his skills and vowed not to acknowledge Zhang Xuan as his teacher if he deemed him unfit. Demonstrating a series of intricate movements, he struck the force measuring stone with his spear, registering a forceful impact of 123 kilograms. After this feat, he turned to Zhang Xuan, seeking advice, only to be shocked as Zhang Xuan seemed oblivious to his performance, smiling without apparent acknowledgement. As Zheng Yang let out a sigh, convinced that he wasn't proving to be a good teacher, Zhang Xuan interjected and inquired whether he had experienced emotional pain in a relationship or faced public humiliation. Flustered and taken aback, Zheng Yang admitted to having a crush on a girl, but insisted it had nothing to do with him. Mo Xiao also chimed in, questioning why Zheng Yang had never shared this information with him, 
and probed about the source of the humiliation. Brushing it off, he deferred discussing it for later and redirected his attention to Zhang Xuan. Curious about how he knew about his personal matters, Zheng Yang questioned the relevance of such knowledge to the guidance on spear techniques, but he promptly clarified that Zheng Yang's assumption was incorrect. Despite possessing strong and decisive spear techniques that mirrored his bold personality, Zheng Yang had become timid and fearful of failure due to a past romantic rejection. This hesitation and confusion during spear practice significantly undermined the power of his techniques. Perplexed and astonished, Zheng Yang questioned how he could discern details about his failed relationship and even understand his personality. Zhang Xuan stepped in again, asserting that one's martial arts reflected their state of mind, and if the mind wasn't open, the martial arts would be similarly constrained. Despite the apparent smoothness of Zheng Yang's spear techniques, there was an underlying entanglement, and the more effort he exerted, the more perplexed he became. With just a glance, Zheng Xuan exposed these weaknesses. Both Mo Xiao and Zheng Yang were awestruck, unable to fathom how he revealed something that even Mr. Wang, the esteemed spear teacher at Hongqian Academy, couldn't discern. Approaching them, Zheng Xuan advised Zheng Yang to strengthen himself enough to command respect in relationships, cautioning that otherwise the girl might look down on him. He encouraged him to open his mind and intensify his cultivation, proving himself through strength. His inspiring words kindled a glimmer of hope in Zheng Yang, and when Zheng Xuan suggested giving it another try, he promptly prepared himself. Declaring that no one should underestimate a young man, Zheng Yang plunged his spear into the force measuring stone with unwavering determination, achieving a remarkable score of 235 kilograms. Mo Xiao's face reflected shock and amazement his disbelief evident as Zheng Yang's strength nearly doubled in such a short span. In response, Zheng Yang knelt and earnestly requested Zheng Xuan to accept him as his disciple, a plea that Zheng Xuan swiftly granted. He then handed him the admission token and instructed him to input his identity. As Zheng Yang registered himself as his student, Mo Xiao began to doubt his decision to choose Mr. Wang as his teacher. Reflecting on his evident talent, he regretted not acknowledging him as his teacher. Suddenly he wondered why, despite Zhang Xuan's remarkable skills and spear techniques, he had not heard of him before. Anxious to know his name, Mo Xiao queried, and upon hearing Zhang Xuan, Zheng Yang found the name familiar, prompting Mo Xiao to recall that the least competent teacher in Hongtian Academy also bore the name Zheng Xuan. Upon confirming that he was indeed the same seemingly incompetent teacher they had known, both Zheng Yang and Mo Xiao were left in stunned silence, resembling statues. Puzzled, Zheng Yang couldn't help but question why someone so proficient would be ranked as the dead last teacher. When he posed this inquiry to Zhang Xuan, the latter dismissed it, attributing his low ranking to the envy of others, emphasizing the importance of not taking such judgments to heart. He even mused that without the Library of Heavenly Path, he might have received a negative score, which he considered worse than the zero he got. Despite Zheng Xuan's nonchalance about his reputation, Zheng Yang bowed and pledged to restore it. Zheng Xuan, however, asserted that it didn't matter and advised him to focus on honing his spear techniques, deeming it the best course of action. After Zheng Xuan instructed Zheng Yang to attend classes the next day, Zheng Yang departed with Mo Xiao, who couldn't help but feel a twinge of jealousy toward him for having such a remarkable teacher. Meanwhile, Zheng Xuan joyfully fiddled with the admission token, content with having four students and realizing he had run out of admission tokens. Determined to acquire more, he made his way to the logistics department. Upon reaching the department, he spotted a desk and pondered whether he could obtain admission tokens there. Suddenly, a mocking voice chimed in, questioning if he was Zheng Xuan, the most renowned teacher at Hongqian Academy. When Zheng Xuan turned around, he noticed Qian Biao and his friends, a hefty guy with a distinctive pencil-style mustache, who held the role of director in the logistics department. Qian Biao, in a teasing manner, questioned why Zheng Xuan, who should be occupied with recruiting students, was present in the logistics department. At the same time, Zheng Xuan recollected that the previous occupant of his body hadn't managed to win his favor. This strained relationship led to Qian Biao frequently criticizing him, ultimately resulting in him receiving only four tokens as a consequence of Qian Biao's disapproval. However, when Zheng Xuan explained that he had run out of admission tokens and needed more, the group burst into laughter. Qian Biao mocked him, declaring it the funniest joke he had ever heard, highlighting the irony that the teacher who ranked last claimed to have used up his admission tokens. Others chimed in noting that even those ranking above him, who had only accepted one student each, hadn't exhausted their admission tokens. Following this, Zheng Xuan inquired if he doubted the situation and proposed a bet. Qian Biao, being open to the idea, questioned what Zhang Xuan, given his financial constraints, could wager. 
In response, Zhang Xuan put forth his own reputation as the stake. The terms of the bet included the winner having the privilege to publicly slap the loser three times. Seeking confirmation, Zhang Xuan ensured the agreement was understood, and surprisingly, Qian Biao not only accepted the terms, but also added a condition to the bet. He proposed that if Zhang Xuan were to endure three face slaps from each member of the group, he would still be bound by the terms. Despite the added challenge, Zhang Xuan promptly agreed to the extended conditions. In an attempt to discredit him, Qian Biao's group delved into the records, scouring the books for information on all the teachers and students. Their objective was to validate whether Zhang Xuan's claim was truthful. While Qian Biao was keenly anticipating Zhang Xuan's reaction, the moment of revelation arrived when one of them discovered pertinent information. Curious, Qian Biao inquired about the findings, and it turned out that there were indeed four students who had formally recognized Zhang Xuan as their teacher. He was really surprised when he heard this. He decided to investigate for himself to see if he had just discovered some dishonest people trying to fill up the available positions. At first, he felt happy to learn that Wang Ying had injured her leg earlier, thinking it might affect her performance. However, he was amazed to find out that she had still managed to rank 67th in the entrance examination. What's more, she turned out to be the daughter of the Wang family, one of the four main families in Qianshuan City. His shock deepened as he continued reading. The next student mentioned was Zhao Ya, who not only ranked seventh in the great assessment, but also happened to be the daughter of Liu Yang, the mayor of Baiyu City. Qian Biao was further surprised to discover that both Liu Yang and Zheng Yang had also achieved top rankings in the hundreds. Upon reviewing all the details, he accused Zhang Xuan of employing dishonest methods because he couldn't fathom how students, who considered Zhang Xuan, someone they perceived as incompetent, as their teacher. In response, Zhang Xuan confidently asserted that whether Qian Biao believed it or not, the results were verified, and it was now time to uphold the commitments made. Later, as Qian Biao recollected the commitments made by Zhang Xuan, his companions in the group raised concerns. They questioned what consequences awaited them if they failed to fulfill their promises. Moreover, they cautioned Zhang Xuan against putting on a false act in front of them, warning that they had the capacity to inflict serious harm if he continued pretending. Zhang Xuan wanted to make sure he understood correctly, so he asked once more if they were indeed not planning to fulfill their promises. In response, one of them mocked him, challenging him to do something about it and suggesting that he might want to resort to physical actions like slapping him. The person singled out by Qian Biao was identified as Li Yuan, a tall guy with brown hair. Qian Biao instructed him to teach Zhang Xuan a lesson, but emphasized that he should not go so far as to cause harm that could lead to death. As Li Yuan prepared to attack Zhang Xuan, Qian Biao pondered the audacity of Zhang Xuan with a cultivation level of one in the breath-gathering stage, causing trouble for a martial artist like Li Yuan, who was at level four in the body-nourishing stage. He realized that Zhang Xuan was unaware of his own weaknesses. In the realm of martial arts, there were distinct stages of cultivation. Level one involved breath-gathering, level two was Dantian formation, level three was Qi formation, level four was body-nourishing, level five was power-strengthening, level six was acupoint opening, Level 7 was QA Connection, Level 8 was Grandmaster, and Level 9 was Supreme. Advancing to higher levels in martial arts became progressively more challenging, and each level was further divided into four grades, Early, Middle, Late, and Peak. Even though Zhang Xuan possessed an incredibly keen eye, his level of cultivation was only at the pinnacle of the third stage, known as the Qi Formation Stage. On the other hand, Mr. Li Yuan had attained a higher level, surpassing his cultivation. After a short period, Qian Biao noticed blood being spat out. He inquired from Li Yuan about the reason behind it, as he had instructed Li Yuan to merely teach Zhang Xuan a lesson and not to kill him. However, two other members of his group clarified that the blood wasn't coming from Zhang Xuan. Perplexed, he turned around to witness Li Yuan lying defeated on the ground. This outcome left Qian Biao astounded, questioning how Zhang Xuan, with a lower level of cultivation, could overcome Li Yuan, who was at a higher stage. Unfazed, Zhang Xuan confidently goaded Li Yuan to continue the confrontation. Qian Biao, still trying to make sense of the situation, urged his two companions not to be intimidated, suggesting that his success might have been a stroke of luck. Encouraged by Qian Biao, the two members decided to join forces and confront him, following Qian Biao's lead. While Zhang Xuan was immersed in studying the weaknesses of his opponents in the books available at the Library of the Heavenly Path, he focused intently, and in a short span, a confident and sharp smile emerged on his face. He strategically struck the right armpit of the first attacker, followed by a precise hit to the lower back of the second assailant. 
Subsequently, he targeted Qian Biao's abdomen. The aftermath of his precise attacks left all three assailants trembling, unable to maintain their balance, and visibly wincing in pain. He then enlightened them about his tactic, revealing that he had targeted their life gate acupoints. He advised them to lie down, and as they attempted to follow his suggestion, they found themselves falling to the ground, further incapacitated by the strategic strikes. The information gathered from the Library of Heavenly Path highlighted a crucial vulnerability shared by almost every cultivator the presence of a life gate acupoint. Strikingly, even a child could potentially cause harm by targeting this specific point. Due to its paramount importance, Cultivators took great care to shield their life gate acupoint, often keeping it a secret even from their closest family members and loved ones. Fortunately for Zhang Xuan, he possessed a unique ability, access to the Library of the Heavenly Path, which granted him the advantage of acquiring knowledge about the intricacies of the life gate acupoint, enabling him to exploit this understanding effectively. Struggling to stand and amidst coughs, Qian Biao inquired how Zhang Xuan came to know about their life gate acupoints. In Zhang Xuan's mind, a sense of satisfaction arose as he realized that the knowledge had been acquired from the library. But what surprised him even more was the library's ability not only to reveal vulnerabilities in cultivation techniques, but also to discern the shortcomings of the cultivators themselves. Despite his recent arrival from Earth and limited knowledge about Qian Biao's specific techniques, defeating him became relatively effortless once he identified the weakness. Rather than providing a direct answer to Qian Biao's question, he turned the inquiry back on him. He reminded Qian Biao about their earlier bet, emphasizing that it was time for Qian Biao to fulfill his promise. Zhang Xuan questioned the necessity of engaging in a physical confrontation when there was a wager to be honored. Even though he cautioned Zhang Xuan, pointing out that as the lowest-ranked teacher, attacking other teachers in public could lead to serious consequences, including the revocation of his teaching qualifications, others joined in with additional threats. One person insisted that Zhang Xuan kneel before them, allowing them to administer a thorough beating or face termination. Another menacingly added that once fired from the academy and stripped of his teacher status, they would go so far as to take his life without repercussions. Zhang Xuan, however, was taken aback by the sudden adherence to rules by those who previously seemed ready to resort to physical strength. In response, he issued a stern warning, stating that if they wanted to play by the rules now, he would do the same. Subsequently, Zheng Xuan began to disclose startling revelations about Qian Biao's actions. He disclosed that half a year prior, Qian Biao had stolen a treasure belonging to Mr. Chen Ming and employed it to gain favor with his concubine. Furthermore, he shed light on the unfortunate fate of a female student who had taken her own life three years ago because of Bai Lin. The distressing experiences of insults and the torment inflicted by him drove her decision. Also, he often had nightmares about her ghost seeking retribution. As if that wasn't enough, Zhang Xuan proceeded to reveal the dark deeds of Du Chun. In a sinister plot to seize property from their mutual friend, he poisoned his friend's wine, leading to his untimely demise. Confronted with the exposure of their wrongdoings, the individuals were shocked and overwhelmed with guilt. They acknowledged the gravity of their actions, expressing remorse and bowing to Zhang Xuan. In a humble plea for forgiveness, they requested to be spared from the consequences of their deeds. Following these revelations, Zhang Xuan reassured them that he wouldn't disclose their past misdeeds. However, he sternly cautioned them, making it clear that if they engaged in such cruel actions again in the future, they wouldn't escape consequences. In response, Qian Biao promptly pledged that they would never dare to commit such deeds again. In an effort to make amends, he handed over the admission tokens Zhang Xuan had requested. Moreover, he assured him that he could obtain as many tokens as he needed in the future. As Zhang Xuan prepared to leave, the individuals, relieved and grateful, bid him farewell with contentment. Later, when he was feeling content, contemplating that perhaps entering this new world had brought unexpected joy and fulfilled some of his dreams, he was interrupted by a commotion. A voice echoed, urging someone not to hinder another person. Zhang Xuan turned his attention toward the scene, witnessing two individuals desperately trying to prevent a man from causing harm to himself. The distressed man expressed a strong desire to end his life yet his friend urged him to release their hold if he truly wished to go through with it. Following this, another person in the vicinity advised the distressed man to take a moment, calm down, and engage in conversation. They acknowledged that if he chose to jump into the lake, it was his decision, but he couldn't forcibly drag someone along with him. Despite being released, the troubled man persisted by grabbing onto another person's leg and heading towards the water, reiterating his desire to end his life. In response, his friend opposed him, pointing out that it was, in fact, the troubled man who was holding on to him. Additionally, the situation became more awkward as the distressed man's pants were on the verge of slipping off. 
while Zhang Xuan contemplated the chaotic state of the world and the strange occurrences around him, he decided to refocus on his task of recruiting students. Unexpectedly, the boy approached him from behind, remarking that judging by Zhang Xuan's attire, he too must be a teacher. The boy clung onto his leg, while two others who had been present earlier made a hasty exit, expressing gratitude to Zhang Xuan. Despite his request to let him go, the boy denied it and shared that he had experienced failure in securing a teacher ten times already, and since it was the last day of recruitment, he implored Zhang Xuan to show mercy and accept him as a student. In response, Zhang Xuan challenged the boy, questioning the point of holding onto his leg if he genuinely desired to be accepted as a student. In a bid to demonstrate his abilities, the boy gathered some bricks and requested Zhang Xuan to observe, leaving him thoroughly perplexed and unsure of what the boy intended to prove. Subsequently, the boy began an unusual practice session, relentlessly striking himself with bricks on various parts of his body, his head, elbow, shoulder, and knee. Zhang Xuan, perplexed by this self-inflicted pain, questioned the purpose behind such actions, wondering if the boy was only hurting himself. In a surprising turn of events, he found himself back in the library. There, a book created by the Library of the Heavenly Path revealed that Yuan Tao, the boy engaged in this rigorous training, was practicing a form of martial arts. Yuan Tao, a rogue cultivator hailing from Dihuang City, was identified as a martial artist at the early level one of the breath-gathering stage. The book further unveiled two weaknesses in his cultivation journey. First, his ancient rhino-horned dragon bloodline had not been activated, and second, his foundation was too feeble to support a stable cultivation of martial arts. Despite these challenges, he had managed to acquire the ancient rhino-horned bloodline. In this particular realm, possessing a formidable bloodline or an exceptional innate body held great significance. Cultivators who wielded either of these attributes, utilizing them effectively, experienced a much swifter pace of cultivation compared to their ordinary counterparts. Moreover, the realm acknowledged various types of innate bodies, including the virginal body, the pure yin body, the pure yang body, and the golden body. Similarly, different kinds of bloodlines were recognized, such as the ancient bloodline, the new bloodline, the inherited bloodline, and the mutant bloodline. The rhino-horned dragon bloodline to which Yuan Tao belonged fell into the category of ancient bloodlines. Legend had it that martial artists possessing this particular bloodline, upon reaching advanced stages of cultivation, became nearly impervious to harm. The rhino-horned dragon bloodline was renowned as one of the most formidable bloodlines, especially excelling in defense, making its bearers exceptionally resilient. Surprisingly, Zheng Xuan had not anticipated that the portly kid possessed an ancient bloodline that had yet to be awakened. His eyes sparkled with realization, and the thought of having this individual as a student intrigued him. Without hesitation, Zheng Xuan promptly welcomed the youngster into his tutelage. Yuan Tao, expressing admiration for his wisdom, formally registered himself as a student by infusing his blood into the admission token. Amidst the jubilation of gaining a new student, Zhang Xuan advised him not to let pride get the better of him. However, a voice from behind, belonging to Shang Bin, the grandson of Shang Chen, an esteemed elder in the academy, and an admirer of Shen Biru, expressed disbelief at Zhang Xuan accepting a student who seemed similar to himself. Shang Bin went further, disparaging him as incompetent and extending the criticism to his newly acquired student. He arrived with Shen Biru, the academy's most beautiful teacher, who commanded the admiration of many. The former Zhang Xuan had once been among her admirers, making her particularly inclined to find fault with him. Following Shang Bin's derogatory comments, Zheng Xuan sought clarification on the subject of the insult. When it became apparent that Shang Bin was indeed targeting him as the supposed rubbish, Zhang Xuan nonchalantly acknowledged that he was well aware that the derogatory term was directed at him, and added a facetious remark about an unpleasant smell. Shang Bin, incensed by him, the purported worst teacher, daring to insult him, felt a surge of anger. The situation was further exacerbated when he noticed that even Shen Biru, whom he held in high regard, was amused by the situation. Trying to maintain composure in the presence of the admired teacher, Shang Bin, with an attempt at politeness, questioned whether he had erred. He also expressed his concern that perhaps the entire academy was unaware of Zheng Xuan's true capabilities. Adding fuel to the fire, he scrutinized Yuan Tao's physical abilities, noting a punch force of only 15 kilograms and poor performance in the entrance examination, where he ranked last. Seizing the opportunity to taunt both Zhang Xuan and Yuan Tao, he suggested that the two were well suited for each other, given their shared bottom ranking status. Having received a barrage of criticisms, Yuan Tao found himself in a state of shock, reevaluating his teacher's competence and contemplating the implications of this unexpected turn of events. In the midst of the heated exchange, 
Zhang Xuan, seemingly unfazed, inquired if he had concluded his remarks, suggesting that he could depart at his convenience. Despite Shang Bin's evident anger, he managed to restrain himself, and, in a composed manner, suggested to Shen Biru that they should leave, deeming it detrimental to her immaculate demeanor to endure any more of Zhang Xuan's purported nonsense. However, she responded with remarkable politeness, acknowledging Zhang Xuan's less-than-stellar performance in the teacher qualification assessment. She encouraged him not to give up, expressing confidence that with dedicated effort, he could improve in the future. Although Zhang Xuan interpreted her words as insinuating that he had given up on himself by accepting Yuan Tao as a student, he graciously thanked her, before revealing his belief in Yuan Tao's latent potential. Despite his current limitations, Zhang Xuan maintained that with proper guidance, Yuan Tao could develop into a formidable individual. Upon learning of Shen Biru's intention to leave, she spotted Shang Bin trailing behind and informed him of her fatigue. Despite his inquiries about dinner plans, she expressed a desire to return for some rest and politely urged him to desist from following her any further. In the aftermath of their departure, Shang Bin issued a warning to Zhang Xuan, proclaiming that he would soon teach him a lesson. Unperturbed, he responded with a calm demeanor asserting that he was ready for whatever challenge lay ahead. Shortly after, Shang Bin caught up with Shen Biru and suggested a change in dinner plans to supper, or if not, even breakfast would suffice. Meanwhile, as Zhang Xuan turned around, he noticed Yuan Tao attempting a discreet escape. Curious, he inquired about Yuan Tao's destination, pointing out that his classroom lay in the opposite direction. Caught off guard, Yuan Tao's face paled, and he started offering excuses, Claiming to be weak and not particularly bright, he argued that being his student would only tarnish Zhang Xuan's reputation and implored him to consider dismissing him. Despite Yuan Tao's hesitation, Zhang Xuan firmly grasped his hand, his eyes alight with determination. With a serious expression, he assured him not to worry. Having officially acknowledged him as his student, Zhang Xuan pledged that Yuan Tao would remain his student for all time, whether in life or death. When Yuan Tao attempted to express further concerns, Zhang Xuan interjected appreciating his considerate nature toward others, and expressing genuine admiration. Eager to make him feel at ease, Zhang Xuan took him to visit the classroom. Yet, Yuan Tao persisted, questioning whether his absence from the classroom the next day would lead to dismissal. In response, Zhang Xuan playfully remarked that he wouldn't dismiss Yuan Tao, but rather toss him into the nearby lake, a notion Yuan Tao had previously contemplated. Zhang Xuan reiterated his commitment, emphasizing that Yuan Tao would be his student indefinitely promising to fulfill his duty and provide a proper burial for him if the need arose. <sighs> Later in his dormitory, Zhang Xuan contemplated that the day marked the culmination of the recruitment period, and it seemed he could only secure a total of five students. With his class scheduled to commence the following day, he realized the urgency of determining his own cultivation level. The cultivation techniques employed by the previous occupant of his body were known as the Hongtian Nine-Level Spells, where each level corresponded to a stage in the nine-level progression of martial artists' cultivation. This technique stood as one of the most widely practiced in the Hongqin Academy. Amongst all the instructors in the academy, Zheng Xuan discovered that he was the sole individual still situated at the pinnacle of the third level. In contrast, his colleagues had progressed to at least the fourth level. Recognizing the need to accelerate his cultivation, he acknowledged the imperative to catch up with his peers swiftly. Subsequently, he decided to explore the book vault hoping to find a solution to the cultivation predicament he had encountered earlier. He reflected on the essence of cultivating qi, understanding that it involved gathering spiritual energy particles from the air into his dantian, followed by the intricate process of compressing and condensing them into qi. The conventional approach required relentless dedication, as ordinary cultivators had to persist day and night for three long years to fill up their dantian and progress to higher levels. Frustration welled up within Zheng Xuan, as he considered the prospect of engaging in such a monotonous routine for an extended period. Moreover, the looming prospect of having a class the next day intensified his concerns. If the prospective students were to discover that he, despite being at the QI formation stage, struggled to condense QI, it could lead to their disinterest or dropout. However, he found a glimmer of hope within the library of the Heavenly Path, as it provided insights into the vulnerabilities of the Hongtian Nine Level spells. Despite discovering numerous issues, thousands in fact, there seemed to be no immediate solutions to rectify these weaknesses. This led Zheng Xuan to ponder the possibility of incorporating various cultivation techniques. By blending these diverse methods, he speculated that it might compensate for the shortcomings of the Hongqin Nine-Level spells 
and potentially yield a more effective and well-rounded approach to cultivation. Following his time in the book vault, he encountered Mr. Mo, an elder serving as one of the guardians of the valuable collection. Noting the lateness of the hour, Mr. Mo inquired about his presence. In response, Zhang Xuan shared that he intended to advance to the level 3 cultivation stage, but found himself facing some confusion. Seeking clarity, he had turned to the book vault to unravel the intricacies of his current predicament. In response, Mr. Mo lauded Zhang Xuan's diligence, expressing appreciation for such earnest dedication and emphasizing the academy's need for young individuals like him. In a gesture of support, Mr. Mo informed Zhang Xuan that the secret books relevant to the level 3 stage could be found on the fourth row of the bookshelves. Encouraging him to proceed, he permitted Zhang Xuan to explore the resources independently. Grateful for the guidance, Zhang Xuan extended his thanks before delving into the wealth of knowledge that awaited him on the bookshelves. While he was engrossed in exploring the vast array of books in the book vault, Mr. Mo contemplated Zhang Xuan's potential. Although he acknowledged Zhang Xuan's dedication, he couldn't help but feel that he lacked extraordinary talent. Despite this, Mr. Mo sincerely wished Zhang Xuan success in the upcoming teacher qualification assessment. On the other hand, Zhang Xuan marveled at the extensive collection of books within the Hongtian Academy's book vault, which appeared to rival even modern libraries in terms of richness and diversity. With this thought in mind, he selected a book titled Wending Spells to delve into the intricacies of various cultivation techniques. As Zhang Xuan perused the contents, he found himself transported once again to the Library of the Heavenly Path. Here, he discovered that every book in the book vault had approximately 3,000 mistakes. Surprisingly, the renowned Hongtian nine-level spells were deemed relatively sound, with only about a thousand mistakes. However, the challenge lay in navigating through these errors to identify the correct path. Zhang Xuan pondered the daunting task, wondering if it would take a lifetime to sift through and rectify so many mistakes. However, an epiphany struck him as he realized that he was on the brink of a breakthrough. Rather than revising the entire book, he surmised that focusing on the specific chapter related to the breakthrough would suffice. To his relief, he discovered that this chapter contained a mere ten mistakes, significantly reducing the effort required for correction. Despite the Library of the Heavenly Path only highlighting mistakes without providing solutions, he realized that he could employ a method of synthesis. By combining information from various books, disregarding errors, and assembling the correct content, he could discern the accurate breakthrough methods. This revelation spurred him to think further, recognizing that he could use this approach not only for his immediate breakthrough, but also to gather techniques from the level 4 and level 5 stages. Motivated by this newfound strategy, Zhang Xuan immersed himself in a comprehensive exploration of the available knowledge. He meticulously combed through numerous books, absorbing information from a multitude of sources. The sound of pages turning and books being perused caught the attention of Mr. Mo, who overheard the activity. Misinterpreting the situation, he assumed Zhang Xuan's behavior indicated a lack of determination and impatience, branding him as pretentious. Little did he know the true purpose and dedication behind his actions. On the contrary, Zhang Xuan strolled outside the library, contentedly slotting books after absorbing the techniques from the level 4 and level 5 stages. With a sense of accomplishment, he planned to return and consolidate the information. However, Mr. Mo, intrigued by the speed of his resolution and puzzled by the absence of copied books, inquired if the problem had been solved so swiftly. To this, Zhang Xuan assured him that it was a minor issue and declined the need for a copy, expressing his gratitude before departing. Unaware of his true actions, Mr. Mo found this dismissive attitude frivolous and decided to report it to the principal, deeming it necessary to address what he perceived as a lack of proper conduct among the teachers. Meanwhile, in his dormitory, Zhang Xuan contemplated the enormity of the task ahead. Even with the assistance of the Library of the Heavenly Path, Copying the correct parts from thousands of books seemed an insurmountable challenge. Suddenly, the ground rumbled, startling him as he found himself once again inside the Library of Heavenly Path. A multitude of books from the book vault flew around him, their contents recorded by the library. Witnessing these books converge into a radiant point of light, Zheng Xuan marveled as they transformed into a large-sized book. Intrigued, he wondered if this was a compilation of thousands of secret books. Upon opening it, he discovered that the book contained precisely the correct parts of various techniques, a remarkable consolidation of the knowledge he sought. Even though Zhang Xuan observed that the newly acquired book did not correspond to any of the original secret books, and its recorded cultivation methods were entirely unfamiliar, he recognized its immense power. Surprisingly, this potent tome lacked a title, prompting Zhang Xuan to entertain the notion that he might be the one to name it. 
Acknowledging that it contained the accurate content derived from the secret books of the Library of the Heavenly Path, he christened it the Heavenly Path Divine Technique. Astonishingly, as he uttered the name, it automatically appeared on the cover of the book. Following the naming of the Heavenly Path Divine Technique, he delved into cultivation. Intently focused, he sensed a multitude of energy rays swirling around him. In a short span, these energies coalesced at a specific point in a circular pattern, leading to a sudden and powerful surge of energy. Zhang Xuan found himself in awe as the breakthrough unfolded with astonishing speed. While others typically required years of dedicated effort to advance to the body-nourishing stage, he achieved this feat in just half a night, reaching the pinnacle of the level 5 power strengthening stage. Surprised by the rapid progress, Zhang Xuan contemplated the source of this superior qi. He briefly considered whether it was connected to the three levels, but he recalled that cultivating superior qi typically necessitated techniques of saint or divine caliber, which raised intriguing questions about the nature of his newfound cultivation prowess. Upon reflection, Zhang Xuan deduced that the remarkable speed of his breakthrough must be attributed to the influence of the Library of the Heavenly Path. Moreover, he adopted the Hongtian nine-level spells as a blueprint for his cultivation, meticulously sidestepping all the documented mistakes, enabling him to accumulate superior Chue. This realization sparked a bright idea. Could he, with the assistance of the Library of the Heavenly Path, craft a saint-divine cultivation technique? With renewed enthusiasm, Zhang Xuan contemplated the knowledge gleaned from the library's encyclopedia. It detailed three tiers of qi, superior, middle, and inferior, where the quality of the qi directly correlated with future accomplishments. Expanding his understanding, he learned that cultivation techniques were classified into five levels, divine, saint, spiritual, ghostly, and mortal. Each level, in turn, comprised four grades, lower, middle, upper, and peak. The wealth of information fueled Zhang Xuan's curiosity and ignited aspirations to explore the realms of cultivation further. Although Zhang Xuan recognized that the newfound qi in his cultivation was undoubtedly superior, and while the primary focus was on fortifying his physical body, he also realized that this process elevated the quality of his qi. Intrigued by the enhancements, he decided to gauge the extent of his newfound strength. Venturing outside, he sought out the force measuring stone, the very tool Wang Ying and others used to assess their power by delivering their strongest blows. Zhang Xuan struck the force measuring stone with all his might, registering an impressive eight cauldrons, equivalent to a force of a thousand kilograms. This result left him in awe, especially when he compared it to the strength of an acupoint opening expert who had opened four acupoints. The revelation led Zhang Xuan to believe that the heavenly path divine technique had not only refined his body, but also bestowed upon him exceptional power. Recognizing the potency of this newfound strength, he deemed it necessary to keep the overnight achievement of reaching the peak of the level 5 stage a secret. Suddenly, he was jolted by a commotion in his surroundings, prompting him to investigate the source of the noise. As he approached, he discovered an intruder who seemed oblivious to his presence. Puzzled by the intruder's intentions and concerned that the disturbance might be aimed at him, Zhang Xuan took cautious steps. Little did he know, he harbored a grievance, holding a knife and believing that Zhang Xuan had wronged a young lady. Conversely, Zheng Xuan suspected the intruder had sinister motives, intending harm to a teacher in the dead of night. Recognizing the need to conceal his identity, he decided to remove his teacher's uniform. In a tense moment, the intruder sensed his presence and turned around to investigate. Fearing discovery, Zhang Xuan swiftly covered his face, his apprehension growing. However, a cunning idea struck him as he could mislead the intruder by claiming to share a similar purpose. Zhang Xuan informed the intruder that he too was there to eliminate Zhang Xuan and inquired about the intruder's identity. Rather than revealing himself, the intruder cryptically encouraged Zhang Xuan to proceed with the plan, offering to stand guard. This unexpected response puzzled Zhang Xuan, who questioned the intruder's true intentions. In a shocking revelation, the intruder clarified that his goal was not murder, but to teach Zhang Xuan a lesson. To further drive his point home, the intruder revealed a more unsettling plan, to inflict harm on a certain part of his body, intending to deter any future disrespect toward the young lady. Caught in this bizarre and potentially dangerous situation, Zhang Xuan contemplated the potential dire consequences had he chosen to sleep instead of cultivating just moments before. Nevertheless, he insisted that Zhang Xuan should lead the way. But Zhang Xuan, however, countered this suggestion, explaining that if he went first, he would likely meet his demise, rendering the whole act of castration redundant. This revelation left the intruder perplexed, questioning the coincidence of someone intending to kill Zhang Xuan while he had plans to carry out his own scheme. Despite the confusion, 
the intruder concluded that it made sense for them to proceed together. He proposed the idea to Zhang Xuan, who, though agreeing, couldn't help but find his mindset rather suspicious. Subsequently, observing his remarkable speed, the intruder speculated whether he had attained the level 5 stage. In response, the intruder suggested utilizing a technique to elevate qi and lighten the body. However, in an unexpected turn, Zhang Xuan found himself transported to the Library of the Heavenly Path, where he stumbled upon a book named Yao Han. The name struck a chord, and upon further reading, Zhang Xuan discovered that Yao Han was the butler in the mayor's mansion in Baiyu City. More surprisingly, he was a martial artist at the early level 6 acupoint opening stage, having already opened 8 acupoints. The revelation triggered memories for Zhang Xuan, recalling that Yao Han served as Zhao Ya's butler and the individual he encountered earlier, who harbored ill intentions, even going so far as to contemplate castration. Despite learning about his formidable acupoint opening stage and an energy level of 12 cauldrons, Zhang Xuan felt an overwhelming anger. Determined to impart a lesson, he acknowledged his own inadequacy in direct combat against Yao Han. Intriguingly, while perusing the book, Zhang Xuan discovered that Yao Han's lifegate acupoint was located on his buttocks. This revelation sparked a sinister smile on his face, and he couldn't help but chuckle. Seizing an opportunity, Zhang Xuan concocted a deceptive plan. When Yao Han inquired about the cause of his amusement, Zhang Xuan, feigning innocence, pointed at the sky, claiming the presence of a UFO. Yao Han, falling for the ruse, eagerly scanned the sky for the imaginary UFO. Seizing the moment, Zhang Xuan delivered a forceful kick from behind, targeting his buttocks where his lifegate acupoint resided. Following the forceful kick, Yao Han expelled blood from his mouth, but Zhang Xuan wasn't done. He delivered another powerful kick, sending Yao Han crashing several meters away against a wall. As he collapsed, his head spun, and he began hallucinating UFOs hovering over him. Meanwhile, Zhang Xuan pondered the apparent contradiction. Despite Yao Han being an acupoint opening expert, Zhang Xuan had managed to overpower him. This realization led him to recognize the significance of identifying an opponent's lifegate acupoint and exploiting their weaknesses. Regaining some composure, Yao Han questioned him about their supposed agreement to confront Zhang Xuan together. In response, Zhang Xuan clarified that he was now dealing with Yao Han, not Zhang Xuan. This declaration instilled fear in Yao Han, who anxiously inquired about his intentions. Subsequently, on the opposite side of the wall, a dog was engaged in its usual activities, unbeknownst to the chaotic scene unfolding nearby. The canine, startled by the cacophony of loud screams and the echoes of punches, promptly scampered away from the tumult, overcome with fear. Having administered a sound beating to Yao Han, Zhang Xuan relished the satisfaction of his actions. Despite the temptation to escalate the confrontation, he restrained himself, considering Yao Han's role as the butler in the mayor's mansion in Baiyu City, and his connection to Zhao Ya as her uncle so he opted for a mere physical chastisement. On the other hand, Yao Han, nursing swollen lips and a bump on his head, couldn't fathom why Zhang Xuan, purportedly a martial arts expert at the peak of level 5 power strengthening, had refrained from using his formidable skills or techniques. Perplexed, he questioned the apparent lack of principles in Zhang Xuan's approach and pondered how he could act more ruthlessly than common street hooligans. Mindful of Yao Han's suspicion, he swiftly devised a plan to divert attention and make Shang Bin the scapegoat. This decision not only provided a cover for Zhang Xuan, but also stemmed from the annoyance caused by his interference, prompting him to involve him in the aftermath of the altercation. Following the altercation, he crafted a deceptive narrative, informing Yao Han that he had been provoked by Zhang Xuan earlier in the day and claimed that he intended to teach Zhang Xuan a lesson in retaliation. Aware of Yao Han's own intentions, he cleverly reasoned that he refrained from carrying out his plan because it would undoubtedly be attributed to him causing trouble with the someone with B in his name. Zhang Xuan suggested that he should blame his tardiness for missing the opportunity to act against Zhang Xuan. Yao Han, left in a state of confusion, received a direct order from him to depart the scene. As Yao Han exited, his thoughts unraveled a sequence of realizations. Firstly, the attacker's earlier interaction with Zhang Xuan that day. Secondly, that he and Zhang Xuan were rivals in love. And thirdly, the recognition that B was a part of the name that both of them held affections for. With Yao Han out of the picture, Zhang Xuan breathed a sigh of relief and reflected on the importance of his nightly cultivation, realizing that without the strength he had cultivated, the outcome could have been far less favorable. This experience reinforced his understanding that strength was indeed a paramount attribute in the world he navigated. The following morning, as he prepared to begin his class, he noticed Zhao Ya's absence. Inquiring about her whereabouts, Yuan Tao speculated that she might join later, and despite her absence, Zhang Xuan decided to commence the class. Once the lecture commenced, 
He explained his distinctive teaching approach, emphasizing the consideration of students' attitudes. Intending to meet each student individually, he initiated the process by calling out names. The first name he called was Wang Ying, and she was taken aback to be called first. He reiterated that she was his inaugural student and requested her presence in the wing room. However, Wang Ying, having discovered information the previous night that painted Zhang Xuan as a fraudulent instructor lacking strength, felt apprehensive, convinced that she would eventually withdraw from the class. Upon entering the room, Zhang Xuan instructed Wang Ying to deliver a punch, demonstrating her strength. Uncertain about the appropriateness of this request, she sought clarification, and he reassured her that it was indeed acceptable. The reason behind this peculiar request was that during the prior punch, the Library of the Heavenly Path had not been activated. Consequently, Zhang Xuan remained unaware of her weaknesses. As she threw her punch, the Library of the Heavenly Path conjured a book specific to her, named Wang Ying, which contained comprehensive details about her weaknesses. Following the punch, just as she was about to speak, Zhang Xuan astutely inquired if her legs had sustained injuries during a confrontation two years prior. This revelation left her astonished, pondering how he had acquired knowledge about the circumstances and timing of her past injury. Following this, Zhang Xuan proceeded to elaborate on the intricacies of a person's leg, highlighting the existence of three acupoints governing strength, speed, and agility, respectively. During her battles, a mishap occurred, inadvertently closing the acupoints responsible for strength which led to a reversal of blood flow, impeding her ability to exert leg strength akin to an ordinary person. In this moment, she recalled similar words from Master Yuan Tao, who, despite recognizing the issue, was unable to remedy it due to the requirement of a master with superior qi. Curious about Zhang Xuan's capabilities, she queried if he could heal her. In response, he confidently asserted that it was a simple task for him. On the contrary, she found herself stunned by his response, as she had believed that the injury would be a lifelong companion. However, he confidently stated that fixing her issue was a mere triviality. He then unveiled the reason for summoning her individually to the room was to resolve her problem. Despite harboring doubts about his capabilities, she complied with his instructions to sit and relax her entire body, finding herself trusting him inexplicably. Subsequently, utilizing the power of his qi, Zhang Xuan imbued a needle with force and propelled it toward Wang Ying. She recognized this technique as a method employed by martial artists, directing the needle to pierce specific points on the patient's body. Contemplating whether it was telekinesis acupuncture, a technique requiring a cultivator's stage to be at least level 5, she pondered whether Zhang Xuan, often dismissed as incompetent, had achieved the level 5 power strengthening stage. While he continued the treatment by inserting more needles into her leg and channeling qi through them, she pondered whether it was indeed Zhang Xuan's qi and endured the pain with beads of sweat forming. The qi felt remarkably pure, devoid of any impurities, prompting her to question if it could be superior qi. The revelation that he possessed such extraordinary chess left her astounded, as she had never heard of anyone in the entire Tianxuan kingdom possessing such a rare quality. After a period, as he removed the last needle and declared the healing complete, she experienced a newfound comfort in her legs, a sensation she had never felt before. They exhibited unparalleled nimbleness, seemingly liberated from shackles. Having long awaited this moment and never imagining that such a stubborn ailment could be easily cured by Zhang Xuan, she felt immense gratitude. In appreciation, she bowed before him, expressing her thanks for the healing. In response, he politely suggested that, now that her leg injury had healed, she should return and focus on her cultivation. Meanwhile, in the classroom, Liu Yang made an announcement declaring his decision to withdraw from the lessons. Curious if anyone else shared his sentiments, he inquired if others wanted to join him. Yuan Tao, after careful consideration, expressed his desire to withdraw as well. However, the prospect of Zhang Xuan's displeasure and the subsequent lesson made him hesitant. Liu Yang, understanding the concerns, argued that anything was better than experiencing qi deviation after being taught by him. To further emphasize his point, Liu Yang issued a challenge, claiming that they should wait and witness the results and confidently asserted that, Based on what he had heard about Zhang Xuan's teaching level, Wang Ying would undoubtedly appear worse when she emerged later. Moments later, the students were startled by the sound of the door opening. Upon seeing Wang Ying standing happily behind Zhang Xuan, Liu Yang found it hard to believe, while Yuan Tao reminded him of his earlier prediction that she would look awful. In response, Liu Yang, left speechless, could only cough in surprise. Observing her joyful expression, he began to wonder if Zhang Xuan had indeed provided her with valuable advice. Suddenly, the classroom's atmosphere shifted when the gate opened, revealing Zhao Ya accompanied by Yao Han. 
She promptly apologized for her tardiness, and Yao Han, his face concealed with bandages, prompted Zheng Xuan to inquire about the identity of the deformed man. Shocked by the term, Yao Han, in anger, questioned who he was referring to, proudly declaring himself as the butler of Baiyu City. Furthermore, he announced his intention to sit in on the class for the day to observe Zhang Xuan's teaching methods. Despite Zhao Ya's attempts to calm him down, Zhang Xuan, displaying his characteristic wit, insisted on absolute silence in the class and made it clear that those he deemed worthless were not welcome. Upon hearing his enraged response, he vehemently questioned Zhang Xuan's authority to label him as a worthless person and even went so far as to challenge Zhang Xuan to a potentially deadly confrontation. However, he astutely pointed out to Zhao Ya that he couldn't effectively address her issue with Yao Han present. Reacting swiftly, she pushed Yao Han out of the class, ordering him to leave as she had a lesson to attend to. Though shocked by her forcefulness, Yao Han found himself expelled from the classroom as Zhao Ya firmly shut the door behind him, leaving him fuming with anger. Meanwhile, Zhang Xuan summoned Liu Yang to join him in the room for his turn. Liu Yang, curious to witness the supposedly beneficial advice he would provide, agreed to participate. Upon entering the room, he craftily inquired if Zhang Xuan wanted him to showcase his techniques. However, Zhang Xuan declined, prompting Liu Yang to question why. In response, Zhang Xuan praised his achievement in mastering the Soaring Fist and making initial progress in the Dragon Fist at such a young age. This revelation left Liu Yang feeling uneasy, as he had kept his cultivation of the Dragon Fist a secret from even his family. Zhang Xuan explained that during Liu Yang's demonstration of the Soaring Fist the previous day, he had discerned the subtle traces of the dragon fist within it. Liu Yang found himself astounded, questioning how he could discern the subtleties of his martial arts practice when even Tao Xiang couldn't. In response, Zhang Xuan went a step further, revealing that Liu Yang had indeed mastered the dragon fist. However, he also pointed out that each time he practiced it, he experienced pain in the armpit and an itch at the Zhangjing acupoint. This revelation left Liu Yang utterly stunned, unable to fathom how Zhang Xuan possessed such accurate knowledge about him. Continuing his explanation, Zhang Xuan delved into the intricacies of the Dragon Fist, emphasizing the importance of having a well-nourished body at the body-nourishing stage for optimal cultivation. However, Liu Yang, only at the breath-gathering stage, was forcefully practicing the martial art, placing undue strain on his fragile body. Zhang Xuan warned that persisting in this manner would exacerbate his injuries over time. Liu Yang, feeling the weight of this revelation, began to sweat nervously. He further advised that if Liu Yang continued his current cultivation path, the muscles in his entire arms would deteriorate, rendering him beyond help. He concluded by inquiring whether Liu Yang had experienced stiffness and spasms during his nightly rest. Upon learning about Liu Yang's predicament in such meticulous detail, he found himself overcome with distress, falling to his knees and fervently imploring Zhang Xuan for assistance. In response, Zhang Xuan reassured him, advising Liu Yang to cease practicing the Dragon Fist immediately. He urged him to focus on elevating his cultivation base while promising to explore solutions for his other afflictions. Witnessing the compassion and guidance offered by Zhang Xuan, Liu Yang couldn't fathom his good fortune. He began to perceive Zhang Xuan as not just a teacher, but a formidable expert, surpassing many seasoned masters. As the classroom door swung open, Yuan Tao caught sight of Liu Yang emerging. Curious about whether he had withdrawn from Zhang Xuan's lessons, Yuan Tao inquired. However, Liu Yang, visibly offended, vehemently rejected the notion. He proclaimed Zhang Xuan as his lifelong mentor after just one day of teaching, affirming his commitment to remain in the lessons. Expressing bewilderment at their thoughts of withdrawal, Liu Yang questioned Yuan Tao's apparent lack of shame. The others in the room were left in a state of perplexity, grappling with the unexpected turn of events. Later, it was Zhao Ya's turn to seek guidance from Zhang Xuan. Much to her surprise, he disclosed a revelation that she possessed the pure yin body. Furthermore, he clarified that she wasn't unwell. Rather, she had the coveted pure yin body that countless women desired. He went on to explain that the yin qi in her body was exceptionally potent, and if harnessed correctly, her cultivation could skyrocket. Regrettably, no one had recognized this potential, and her choice of the bai bao technique, a yin-natured cultivation method, was inadvertently exacerbating her situation. Afterward, Zhang Xuan suggested that the best solution was to find a technique capable of unlocking the potential of her body. Curious, she inquired about the type of technique she should cultivate. In response, he assured her that he would visit the book vault the next day to see if there were any suitable options for her. Moving on to Yuan Tao's turn, he received a book titled Hong Tian Nine Level Spells, Level 1. Overwhelmed with joy, Yuan Tao expressed his gratitude to Zhang Xuan for providing him with such a well-modified technique. In his excitement, 
he attempted to grab Zhang Xuan, who in turn tried to evade him and advised him to pay attention to hygiene. Nevertheless, Zhang Xuan handed him the altered Hong Tian nine level spells, level one, which despite not being heavily modified, was still several times more effective than the original version. As for Zheng Yang, it was evident that his strength had once again increased after receiving some guidance from him. Subsequently, Zhang Xuan addressed the group, informing them that he had reviewed the individual challenges they faced and encouraged everyone to remain persistent in their cultivation. Suddenly, the classroom door burst open with a forceful kick, startling everyone inside and a person entered, loudly shouting Zhang Xuan's name. Wang Ying recognized the intruder as Wang Tao, a level 4 body-nourishing stage practitioner. Accusing Zhang Xuan of using deception, Wang Tao asserted that coaxing his younger sister Wang Ying into lessons was a grave offense, and issued a 10-second ultimatum for him to withdraw Wang Ying and Miss Zhao Ya immediately. He warned that if Zhang Xuan refused, despite being a teacher, he shouldn't expect any leniency. Unfazed, Zhang Xuan calmly instructed Wang Tao to leave the class, as he was currently teaching. However, Wang Tao questioned his teaching abilities and expressed skepticism about his identity. To everyone's surprise, a spirit animal lion emerged from Zhang Xuan's body, its powerful roar echoing in the room. Zhang Xuan, with a relaxed demeanor, warned Wang Tao to leave the vicinity. Wang Tao, shocked by the unexpected turn of events, found himself facing a formidable adversary. Despite only sensing such a formidable aura from his master before, he was perplexed by its presence in someone deemed a good-for-nothing at the mere cultivation stage of three. Quickly overcoming his surprise, he dismissed the notion of fear and drew his sword. The thought of his reputation crumbling if news of him fleeing from this confrontation spread, spurred him into action. Swiftly he darted away, leaving Wang Ying in a state of shock. While he launched his attack, vehemently proclaiming Zhang Xuan's imminent demise, Zhang Xuan effortlessly halted the powerful sword strikes, using just two fingers. The ease with which he countered the assault left Wang Tao, who had expected a formidable battle, utterly stunned. After witnessing this astounding feat, his complexion turned pale with disbelief as he wondered, how could Zhang Xuan, the supposed good-for-nothing at level 3, effortlessly block his attacks with just two fingers? Even elders at the acupoint opening stage couldn't achieve such a feat. Although he initially dismissed it as mere luck, his subsequent attempts to resume the attack proved futile. He found himself immobilized, unable to wrest his sword from Zhang Xuan's unyielding grip. In the midst of this struggle, Wang Tao contemplated the possibility that Zhang Xuan's true strength might surpass the Qi formation stage. Recalling the last teacher qualification assessment, where he exhibited the power of the peak Qi formation stage, he questioned whether Zhang Xuan had made a breakthrough since then. Even if he had, Wang Tao reasoned, Zhang Xuan would likely only be at the body nourishing stage, seemingly insufficient to halt him with just two fingers. Despite Wang Tao's determined efforts to free his sword, applying considerable force and turning red in the process, Zhang Xuan effortlessly retaliated. With a mere flick of his two fingers, Wang Tao found himself forcibly dragged several meters away, skidding across the ground and out of the room. In the midst of the commotion, Yao Han stood outside the classroom door, attentively listening to the unfolding events. Initially, he assumed that Wang Tao was giving Zhang Xuan a lesson, anticipating that Zhang Xuan would be embarrassed. However, his joy swiftly transformed into shock when Wang Tao, in the midst of his clash with Zhang Xuan, crashed forcefully into the very door behind which Yao Han was stealthily eavesdropping. The impact was so potent that it not only injured Yao Han, but also left him buried beneath the fallen door. Conversely, Zhang Xuan nonchalantly dusted his hands off, unfazed by the collision, and calmly announced his intention to resume the class. Inside the classroom, the students were left in a state of shock, witnessing Zhang Xuan's formidable strength as he effortlessly dealt with Wang Tao, a level 4 martial artist in the body-nourishing stage. This unexpected display of power prompted Yuan Tao to question the prevailing belief that Zhang Xuan possessed the lowest ability in the entire academy. Simultaneously, Wang Ying and Zhao Ya found themselves pondering whether he had been concealing his true strength all along. Meanwhile, Yao Han inquired from Wang Tao about his attempt to confront Zhang Xuan, expressing surprise at his defeat. In response, Wang Tao offered an excuse, claiming that he had recently acquired a new technique and was unexpectedly counterattacked by its power, resulting in his defeat. Unconvinced, Yao Han pressed further, asking about the nature of this new technique and whether it had exposed Zheng Xuan's true abilities. Wang Tao once again crafted an excuse, stating that he had been on his way to make a purchase. However, he reminded him of the academy's rule that prohibited any interruptions during a class, instructing Yao Han to wait outside until the class concluded. Subsequently, he expressed his intention to pose a question, and permission was granted. 
although there was an underlying hope that the inquiry wouldn't touch upon the recent events. Yao Han then inquired about the presence of any female teacher in the academy, whose name included B, and whether there were individuals vying for her affection. In response, Wang Tao disclosed that the sought-after figure fitting that description was none other than Miss Shen Biru, regarded as the angel of the academy. Regarding her admirers, Wang Tao mentioned that Shang Bin had been pursuing her for a while, and surprisingly, Zheng Xuan harbored intentions of pursuing her as well. Armed with this information, Yao Han contemplated the possibility of a conflict between Shang Bin and Zhang Xuan the previous night, seeking clues to ascertain if Shang Bin was indeed involved. On the other hand, Shang Bin inquired with Chao Xiong about whether his student had been swayed by Zhang Xuan. Upon confirmation, he sought assistance from his grandfather, Elder Shang, who held a position in the Office of Affairs. However, Shang Bin expressed his reluctance to involve his grandfather, asserting that he had been eagerly anticipating the opportunity to teach Zhang Xuan a lesson himself. In his contemplation, he considered that if he could confront Zhang Xuan without a valid reason, it would undoubtedly create a negative impression on Shen Biru. Yet with the recent development, he saw an opportunity to exploit the situation to his advantage and confront Zhang Xuan with a justifiable cause. Following this, Shang Bin requested Chao Xiong's company, expressing the possibility of requiring his grandfather's assistance in dealing with other teachers. However, when it came to Zhang Xuan, the so-called good-for-nothing, Shang Bin believed that a simple demand to return Chao Xiong's student should suffice. In case of refusal, their plan was to resort to more forceful measures. They proceeded towards his classroom, where they encountered Wang Tao and Yao Han outside. Shang Bin questioned Wang Tao about his presence there, instead of cultivating at his grandfather's place. Wang Tao and Yao Han turned around, somewhat surprised by his unexpected appearance. Wang Tao explained that he was attempting to retrieve his younger sister, who had been influenced to attend Zhang Xuan's lessons. Learning that Zhang Xuan had also taken Miss Wang Ying, Shang Bin became more irritated and resolved that he needed to teach Zhang Xuan a lesson. Following this, Wang Tao introduced Yao Han to them, revealing him as the butler of Mayor Zhao in Baiyu City, and further disclosed that Miss Zhao Ya, whom he served, had also fallen victim to deception. Shang Bin then inquired with Yao Han if he was in a similar situation, urging them to follow him into the classroom. He had resolved to teach Zhang Xuan a lesson, who he believed lacked moral principles as a teacher. Meanwhile, Zhang Xuan was engrossed in teaching and explaining the flaws in the Hongtian nine-level spells, considering it the most basic technique at Hongtian Academy, and the students were captivated by his enlightening explanations. Regardless of the incredible nature of the techniques and martial arts, he could pinpoint flaws immediately. Liu Yang even felt that, compared to Zhang Xuan, his father seemed somewhat ignorant. Other students struggled to find words to describe how effectively Zhang Xuan was teaching. In the midst of the students' elation upon realizing Zhang Xuan's teaching prowess, the atmosphere suddenly shifted as the classroom door swung open, revealing the unexpected entrance of Shang Bin, accompanied by Wang Tao, Yao Han, and Tao Xiong. Zhang Xuan, taken aback and confused, wondered why they had come. Shang Bin, with a tone of accusation, expressed his disbelief at Zhang Xuan's audacity, because not only had he manipulated Mr. Tao Xiong's students, but he had also deceived Miss Wang Ying and Miss Zhao Ya, questioning where he found the courage. Faced with these accusations, Zhang Xuan, growing increasingly irritated, suggested they discuss it later since he was currently in the middle of a class. Shang Bin, dismissing the suggestion, accused him of putting on an act and issued a warning, either withdraw the students immediately or spending the rest of the semester in a wheelchair. While Zhang Xuan sought clarification, questioning his intentions, he also reminded him of the academy's prohibition against teachers engaging in physical altercations on its premises. Shang Bin, undeterred by the academy's rules, asserted that while he might worry about punishment when dealing with others, he felt no such concern in dealing with someone like Zhang Xuan. Zhang Xuan, sensing a personal grudge, inquired whether his animosity stemmed from an incident the previous day, suggesting that he might fear the disapproval of Shen Biru. However, Shang Bin dismissed these concerns emphasizing that his primary purpose was to impart a lesson to Zhang Xuan, and he cared little about him reporting the matter to her. Upon hearing the conversation, Yao Han recalled Shang Bin's pursuit of her and the conflict with Zhang Xuan the previous day. Realizing that he was the one who had beaten him, Yao Han reacted swiftly, delivering a powerful punch that caused Shang Bin to spit out blood. Stunned, Shang Bin questioned the unexpected attack, seeking clarification on the sudden violence. However, an enraged Yao Han, his eyes red with fury, confronted Shang Bin, demanding to know if he was oblivious to his own actions. Shang Bin issued a warning, threatening consequences if Yao Han struck him again. But Yao Han defiantly challenged him to follow through. Caught off guard by his response, 
Xiang Bin found himself on the receiving end of a relentless barrage of punches. Amidst the chaos, Wang Tao, confused by the unfolding events, turned to Chao Xiong for an explanation and received advice to intervene and stop the escalating confrontation. On the contrary, Zhang Xuan felt a sense of satisfaction as he had anticipated that a conflict might arise. Meanwhile, Wang Tao attempted to intervene and urged Yao Han to calm down, suggesting that they could resolve the matter through conversation. However, Yao Han, fueled by anger, insisted that he release him, asserting that he had not yet delivered a sufficient beating to Shang Bin. At the same time, Shang Bin, with swollen lips and broken teeth, reflected on the severity of the beating he had received. Despite Chao Xiong's attempts to pacify him, Shang Bin continued to challenge Yao Han, expressing a determination to fight to the death. Abruptly, Zhang Xuan raised his voice, demanding an end to the brawl, and sternly reminded them that any personal grievances should be settled outside the classroom, cautioning that he would involve the student affairs office if necessary. An irritated Shang Bin retorted, instructing him to do as he pleased, harboring both embarrassment for his public display and concern about how other teachers might perceive him. He further warned Zhang Xuan to wait, vowing to seek revenge later. Once the commotion settled, post-class discussions among students outside the classroom centered on the engaging nature of the lesson, particularly the unexpected altercation between Shang Bin and Yao Han. Liu Yang openly expressed amazement at Zhang Xuan's strength, while Zhao Ya sought an explanation from Yao Han regarding his unusual behavior that day. As soon as Wang Ying bid farewell to Zhang Xuan and exited the classroom, Wang Tao urgently seized her hand, insisting that she return home. Bewildered, she questioned why she needed to leave since she was currently residing in the academy. To her surprise, he disclosed that it was not his desire for her to leave, rather, it was his father's insistence that she return home. This revelation left her utterly stunned. Meanwhile, Shang Bin nursed a growing frustration stemming from the unprovoked beating he endured adding only shame and humiliation to his day. Driven by a desire for revenge, he contemplated teaching Yao Han a lesson. On the other hand, Chao Xiong pondered the possibility that Zhang Xuan might be involved as an accomplice. Contemplating the recent events, Shang Bin concluded that Yao Han's unprovoked attack on him was likely orchestrated to provoke a confrontation with Zhang Xuan. He expressed his certainty that he had never offended Yao Han, leading him to believe that the beating was a calculated move to incite a fight. Seeking confirmation from Chao Xiong, he inquired whether Liu Yang willingly chose Zhang Xuan as his teacher, and Chao Xiong affirmed that Liu Yang's decision was not voluntary. Convinced of this fact, Shang Bin suggested that he initiate an Enlightenment will trial against Zhang Xuan, and emphasized the importance of ensuring the trial's severity, aiming for the maximum punishment as the most effective means to eliminate Zhang Xuan from their midst. Meanwhile, within Wang's mansion, the resounding echoes of Wang Ying's father, Wang Hong, filled the air as he vehemently ordered her to kneel. He demanded that she admit her mistake, questioning why she would choose the seemingly worst teacher in the academy. Wang Ying attempted to explain that Zheng Xuan was not as her father perceived, emphasizing his talent. However, the mention of talent further fueled his anger. He asserted that Zhang Xuan was a useless teacher, responsible for his students' descent into qi deviation, and questioned whether Zhang Xuan truly had the qualifications to be her teacher. He continued reprimanding her, emphasizing that it was her free will to choose her teacher, but now he questioned whether she was aware of Zhang Xuan's teaching standards. Suddenly, three elders, accompanied by a young man, entered the mansion and advised her to heed her father's counsel and not be deceived by Zhang Xuan. One of the elders suggested she learn from Wang Yang, a robust man with brown hair and a spiky hairstyle, who was a disciple of Lu Xun, who had taken only one lesson, resulting in a 40% increase in his strength. In response, Wang Ying asserted that Zhang Xuan could easily guide her to a 100% strength increase, and it even cured her legs. The elder was astonished, pointing out that even Master Yuan Yu couldn't heal her legs. Moreover, another elder dismissed it as a joke, laughing loudly, and a third elder insisted she share something more believable, expressing skepticism about Zhang Xuan's abilities since he hadn't even attended his lessons. After enduring a barrage of negative comments about Zhang Xuan, she became increasingly frustrated, and her anger reached a boiling point. She vehemently declared that none of them had ever attended Zhang Xuan's lessons, questioning their right to speak ill of him. Defiantly, she proclaimed her unwavering commitment to remain in his lessons. Initially stunned, the elders burst into laughter. However, the situation took a serious turn when Wang Ying's father accused her of talking nonsense and issued an ultimatum to withdraw immediately or never return home. And without hesitation, she stormed out of the house. Her father continued shouting that if she left, she shouldn't come back. Despite his warnings, she halted in front of the force-measuring stone. 
Faced with their disbelief, she resolved to prove her point and unleashed a powerful punch and a forceful kick on the measuring stone. The results left everyone in awe. Her punch force had increased to 120 kilograms, a significant leap from the 53 kilograms recorded when she left the day before. Moreover, her legs demonstrated newfound strength, delivering a kick with an impressive force of 205 kilograms. Wang Ying proudly asked if they could witness the progress she had made under Zhang Xuan's guidance. Her father, astonished, inquired if Zhang Xuan had also cured her legs. She confirmed this, prompting further questions about the content of his lessons. Though she agreed to share, she emphasized the profound nature of the teachings, admitting she could only recall a fraction. As she recounted the lessons on gathering and nourishing one's breath, her father and the elders were incredulous. The depth of the theories behind the breath-gathering stage left them enlightened, and one elder even mused that if he had received such instruction earlier, he would be unstoppable now. Following that, Wang Hong emphatically insisted that Wang Ying should not withdraw from Zhang Xuan's lessons. Then, with a courteous tone, he asked if she could inquire whether he would accept Wang Tao and Wang Yang as his students. Moreover, he added a humble request, wondering if it might be possible for him to become Zhang Xuan's student as well. However, the other elders immediately objected, asserting that Wang Hong, as the patriarch, could not become a student of a lower-level teacher, and argued that such a situation would tarnish the dignity of the Wang family. As Wang Hong was about to respond, they interrupted with laughter, explaining that they were different and did not represent the dignified image of the Wang family. To add to their request, they also asked if Wang Ying could inquire whether Zhang Xuan would accept them into his lessons. Upon hearing this, Wang Hong was utterly shocked and couldn't contain his disbelief. He exclaimed shame on them all, while Wang Ying burst into laughter. On the contrary, Zhang Xuan was heading to the book vault with thoughts about his considerable progress in cultivation. However, he acknowledged that his understanding of martial arts was still lacking, and he felt the need to delve into it more deeply to teach his students effectively. Upon reaching the book vault, he greeted Mr. Mo, who questioned the reason for his presence at that time, so he explained his desire to read some martial arts books. Regrettably, Mr. Mo denied him entry for the day. Perplexed, Zhang Xuan inquired about the reason behind this decision. Shen Biru arrived and greeted Mr. Mo, casually mentioning that she intended to pick a few books. Surprisingly, he promptly allowed her entry. Zheng Xuan found this unfair and questioned the disparity in treatment. Mr. Mo clarified that she was entering to study, prompting him to assert that he also wanted to study. She interjected, wondering if Zheng Xuan didn't like her, as he had not acknowledged her. Later she addressed Mr. Mo, expressing concern that preventing Zheng Xuan's entry could create a negative impression among other teachers. Upon her plea, Mr. Mo granted Zheng Xuan permission to enter. However, he cautioned him against wandering, threatening punishment if he did so. Grateful for her assistance, Zhang Xuan entered first, surprising her as he didn't take the opportunity to engage in conversation with her. Inside, he encountered unexpected difficulty accessing the book vault and grew concerned, fearing he might not have another chance to enter. Despite this, he realized the book vault wasn't overly large and believed that by reading quickly, he could finish the entire collection in a single day, eliminating the need for a return visit. Without further delay, he began flipping through the pages, immersing himself in the content. Simultaneously, Mr. Mo caught the sound of pages flipping and grew irritated, suspecting that Zhang Xuan was once again mindlessly flipping through books. Wondering if he was attempting to show off, Mr. Mo stood up and resolved to investigate inside the book vault. While eager to see what Zhang Xuan was searching for, Zhang Xuan continued exploring various books, extracting one with the title, Cultivation of Wisteria. This piqued Mr. Mo's curiosity about the specific type of book he was after. After a while, he observed that Zhang Xuan had perused a diverse range of books, and this fueled his anger. Convinced that Zhang Xuan had come to stir trouble, he decided to impart a lesson once he exited the vault. Meanwhile, Shen Biru noticed Zhang Xuan merely flipping through books and wondered if this was the reason Mr. Mo had reservations about allowing him into the book vault. She also speculated whether Zhang Xuan knew she would be visiting the book vault that day and deliberately entered at the same time to capture her attention. Nevertheless, she was unwilling to let him disrespect the sanctity of the book vault and opted to confront him. As he continued to flip through the pages, she inquired about his actions, to which he nonchalantly replied that he was merely reading. Displaying evident irritation, she conveyed her dissatisfaction, asserting that if he believed his actions were impressive, they were not. Advising him to exit the book vault immediately, she made it clear that she wouldn't be swayed by such tactics. While still engrossed in reading, Zhang Xuan claimed to understand her words, leading her to believe that he comprehended her message. 
Despite this, he persistently flipped through various books and pages within the vault. In response, she raised her voice, questioning whether he failed to hear her earlier. Expressing her anger, she declared that the more he behaved that way, the more repulsed she became. In the midst of this exchange, Zhang Xuan retorted, shouting back at her and questioning if she had lost her mind. Angrily, he suggested that if she was truly bored, she could find a corner to squat in and draw circles. But she should refrain from bothering him. Taken aback, she couldn't help but be surprised by the way he addressed her. Nonetheless, she maintained the belief that he was intent on putting on a show and decided to observe how long he would persist. As hours passed and it grew late into the night, she pondered the six or seven hours he had spent continuously flipping through books. Shen Biru speculated that if he truly aimed to capture her attention, he would have ceased his actions sooner. In the midst of this, Zhang Xuan closed a book, revealing that every book in the vault had been completely imprinted in the Library of Heavenly Path. Moreover, he also discovered a technique suitable for Zhao Ya's pure yin body. Suddenly realizing that Shen Biru had remained in the book vault for the entire seven hours of his book-flipping marathon, he considered leaving her undisturbed since he had accomplished his purpose. However, the moment he stepped outside, Mr. Mo blocked his way with his stick. Mr. Mo sternly declared that Zhang Xuan was no longer welcome in the book vault and instructed him not to return the next day. Puzzled, he inquired about the reason behind this decision to which Mr. Mo, visibly frustrated, explained that he had observed Zhang Xuan merely flipping through books without taking notes or genuinely studying the contents. Angrily, he questioned the unconventional reading approach, shouting about the inappropriate manner of reading. Zhang Xuan found it odd that he was upset because he read too quickly. Unfazed, he accepted Mr. Mo's instructions, allowing him to perceive him as a troublemaker. He bid farewell and began to leave. But Shen Biru requested him to stop for a moment. Intrigued, he wondered about the reason for this additional interaction. She inquired whether, after reading for an extended period, Zhang Xuan could recall some content. Confused, he asked for clarification, so she explained that she had noticed him reading the eight methods of pill refinement and wished to consult him on the topic. However, she harbored suspicions, thinking that he was merely pretending to read, and her true intention was to expose any potential deception by challenging him with questions. Following that, Zhang Xuan urged Shen Biru to hasten her inquiries, suggesting that she could ask anything she found unclear, as he needed to return for dinner. Despite appearing irritated by his words, almost as if she were pleading with him, she managed to put on a smiling face. Shen Biru then mentioned a phrase from the book, If the herbs scatter, it would be difficult for the pill to form expressing her difficulty in understanding it. She politely asked Zhang Xuan to clarify its meaning. However, she was taken aback by Zhang Xuan's response. He asserted that she remembered the phrase incorrectly. It was actually, if the herbs coagulate, it would be difficult for the pill to form. He proceeded to explain that in the process of refining a pill, if the herbal fluid were to clump together, it would become impossible to shape it into pills. To add a touch of embarrassment, he remarked that she had recited the question incorrectly and should feel ashamed. Shen Biru found herself stunned by his ability to see through her intentional misrecitation of the phrase. She couldn't believe he had not only perceived her trick, but also provided the correct answer which left her pondering whether Zhang Xuan truly possessed the ability to remember the eight methods of pill refinement merely by flipping through the book. Later, as Shen Biru was about to speak, Mr. Mo interjected, requesting her to wait for a moment. Aware that the eight methods of pill refinement was a fundamental manual for alchemists, he recognized that even those who didn't specialize in pill refinement might have some knowledge of it. Seizing the opportunity to test Zhang Xuan's understanding, he posed a question. How would one interpret the phrase, circulating cycle of qi, reflecting the sight of all creatures? Zhang Xuan couldn't help but feel a bit annoyed that Mr. Mo wasn't aware of such fundamental cultivation principles. Nevertheless, he answered the question, explaining that the phrase referred to the phenomenon when one's qi circulated through the body in a complete cycle. During this process, the individual's consciousness would seem to extend, gaining insights into the rules governing all creatures. He further noted that this particular sentence was recorded in Senior Bai Ming's Theories of Blood and Qi, specifically on the 27th shelf with the detailed explanation found on page 69. Upon comprehending his explanation, Mr. Mo was visibly astonished, considering that a few days earlier, another elder had posed the same question and had been unable to provide an answer. Moreover, the answer couldn't be found in the book vault at that time. Intrigued by the situation, Mr. Mo instructed Zhang Xuan to wait and invited Miss Shen Biru to accompany him to verify the accuracy of his response, suggesting a desire to confirm it. Entering the book vault together, they located the book titled Theories of Blood and Qi. To their amazement, the location and page number mentioned by Zhang Xuan 
matched precisely with the information in the book. It was beyond their belief that the answer eluding an elder for days was hidden within such an obscure book and that Zhang Xuan had the ability to pinpoint it. In the meantime, Zhang Xuan inquired if there was anything else, expressing his intention to leave. Mr. Mo, still in a state of disbelief, didn't respond, while Shen Biru requested him to wait. Meanwhile, Mr. Mo was utterly astonished, and the book he was holding slipped from his grasp as he too found himself on the ground. He couldn't fathom whether Zhang Xuan was the same teacher who had ranked last in the teacher qualification assessment. If he truly stood at the bottom, how could he possess such profound knowledge and began to realize that something extraordinary was happening? On the other side of the vault's entrance, Zhang Xuan inquired about Shen Biru's further intentions, expressing his eagerness to go for dinner. She then mentioned that she too had not eaten. Zhang Xuan, feeling a bit annoyed, pondered over the fact that he had already provided her with answers to her questions. Despite this, she still expected him to treat her to a meal. In response, he remarked that if she was hungry, she could simply eat and questioned why she was summoning him for that purpose. Meanwhile, she found herself a bit surprised inwardly. Numerous men had invited her to meals before, but she had turned them down. In the case of Zheng Xuan, she was giving him a chance. However, his way of speaking to a beautiful girl was quite peculiar. Even after she clarified her intent to treat him to a meal, he responded with an unexpected reaction. Initially shocked, he eventually sported a mischievous smile and agreed to her offer. However, he jokingly requested a lavish meal, not just simple fare like steamed buns and scallion pancakes. This slightly irritated her, but she reluctantly consented. The Library of Heavenly Path granted him the ability to discern the shortcomings of all skills and the life gate acupoints of everyone, yet it failed to provide him with guidance on how to communicate with women. Moreover, Zhang Xuan had somehow managed to enrage the top beauty of Hongqian Academy to the extent that she was on the verge of vomiting blood, all with just a few words. As they walked along, she grew puzzled by his silence. When she turned around to address him, she was shocked to perceive a pure energy aura enveloping him, an indication of being at the level 2 mind stage, known as the tranquil mind. In the realm of martial arts, cultivating the mind stage was as crucial as enhancing one's key base. A superior mind stage facilitated faster cultivation, leading to greater achievements in the future. Considering the rarity of individuals who had reached this level in the academy, Shen Biru began to question whether Zhang Xuan's teacher qualification assessment results were genuine. She contemplated the possibility that his true goal was to use the disdain of others as a means to train his mind, ultimately breaking into the level 2 mind stage. This made her reconsider if everything had been an elaborate act. Determined to expose any deception, she found herself lost in her thoughts, while Zhang Xuan, oblivious to her suspicions, was starving in a daze. Suddenly, Zhang Xuan found himself captivated by the enchanting scenery around him, and he slipped into a trance. This unexpected state led him to reach the level 2 mind stage. However, for Zhang Xuan, this was not a surprise. As a time traveler who had experienced the ebb and flow of life and death, coupled with his cultivation of the heavenly path divine technique and possession of pure qi, such rapid advancement was only natural. After a lengthy stroll, they arrived at a renowned establishment known as the Supreme Restaurant in Hongxian House a place bustling with people eager to savor a delightful meal. Zhang Xuan, anticipating a more casual dining venue, was taken aback by the choice, while Shen Biru wondered how long he could maintain his facade. Upon entering the restaurant, they were warmly greeted and received attentive service. It became apparent that this was the most luxurious dining spot in Hongtian Academy, living up to its prestigious reputation. Meanwhile, Shang Bin was in the same restaurant, his frustration evident as he angrily banged on the table. Cao Xiong, trying to pacify him, advised against letting anger consume him, and shared that he had applied for the Enlightenment Will Trial. The Academy would inspect Liu Yang the next day, and Cao Xiong assured Shang Bin that Zhang Xuan would face consequences for his actions. He also proposed to Shang Bin that he should definitely confront Yao Han with the assistance of the beast lent by Elder Shang. However, Shang Bin voiced uncertainty, explaining that the sky-shattering lion belonged to his grandfather, and as such, might not follow his commands at the moment. Despite his reservations, Chao Xiong suggested a potential solution, enticing the lion with delicious food and drinks, which might encourage its cooperation. As the dishes were served, the manager, Mr. Wu, a narrow-eyed man apologized for the delay to Shang Bin and politely confirmed that all the ordered dishes were served and also offered further assistance if needed. Seizing the opportunity, Shang Bin instructed him to remember to feed the sky-shattering lion in the backyard, and he readily agreed to fulfill this request. Observing this interaction, Chao Xiong remarked that he had heard Hong Tian House held significant influence, and Mr. Wu, the manager, was usually indifferent to guests. Therefore, 
he wondered why Mr. Wu was particularly hospitable to them this time. Later, Shang Bin went on to explain that the Hong Tian house held significant influence because its owner, Elder Hong Hao, was a highly formidable individual who had once contended for the position of principal. However, for reasons unknown, he resigned from his role as an elder. Shang Bin revealed that they were treated with such courtesy because Elder Hong Hao happened to be a close friend of his grandfather, which explained why Mr. Wu extended a respectful welcome. While engaged in conversation, Chao Xiong noticed something that caught his attention and pointed out the presence of Shen Biru and Zhang Xuan nearby. Shang Bin was taken aback to see her with Zhang Xuan, and he wondered why she was accompanying someone he deemed a good for nothing. Despite having invited her multiple times without success, he couldn't fathom her association with Zhang Xuan. He was about to approach her, but Cao Xiong advised against it, and proposed an idea that would not only reveal Zhang Xuan's true nature to Shen Biru, but also showcase Shang Bin's impressive demeanor. Intrigued, Shang Bin inquired about this plan. Later, Zhang Xuan casually placed his chopsticks on the table, expressing his fullness and appreciation for the delicious food. Meanwhile, Shen Biru was growing increasingly upset as she observed that he seemed entirely absorbed in eating, seemingly disregarding her presence. Frustrated, she signaled the waiter to bring the bill. When Mr. Wu presented the bill and stated that it amounted to 1,280 gold coins, Shen Biru was shocked. She couldn't understand why the bill was so expensive, especially since she had carefully calculated the cost while ordering and expected it to be no more than a hundred gold coins. Perplexed, she sought an explanation. Mr. Wu apologized and clarified that a bottle of Drunk Immortal alone cost 1,200 gold coins. She was once again stunned, as she had assumed the beverage was complimentary since they were at Hong Chin House. However, Mr. Wu wore an annoyed expression as he questioned whether she believed the beverage was free. He advised her that she should have inquired about the prices beforehand. Since she didn't ask, he assumed she was aware of the cost, and he refrained from further comments on the matter. Though irritated, Shen Baru composed herself and inquired about the possibility of putting it on credit, promising to repay the amount later. Mr. Wu, however, sarcastically rebuffed her, reminding her not to order food beyond her means and insisted that she must pay for what she had ordered. In the midst of this, Shang Bin arrived on the scene, questioning the commotion and deeming it indecent. Mr. Wu explained the situation, revealing that they had enjoyed a meal but lacked the funds to settle the bill. Seizing the opportunity, Shang Bin used the circumstance to taunt Zhang Xuan. He remarked that if Zhang Xuan had no money, he shouldn't attempt to fake generosity. He expressed that it was acceptable for Zhang Xuan to embarrass himself, but bringing shame upon Miss Shen Biru was another matter. Meanwhile, Zhang Xuan, having heard the exchange, felt a growing sense of annoyance. Before he could respond, Shang Bin urged Zhang Xuan to cease defending himself, expressing deep disappointment in his behavior. Unbeknownst to him, Shang Bin was secretly amused because he had orchestrated the situation. He had arranged for Mr. Wu to offer drinks that Zhang Xuan couldn't afford, and his plan was to later come to Shen Biru's rescue when Zhang Xuan found himself unable to pay. In this way, Shang Bin hoped to win Shane her favor through his apparent generosity, making it a clever plan to achieve two goals at once. Shen Biru standing up called out Shang Bin's name. He was initially excited, thinking his plan was succeeding. However, his excitement turned to fear as Shen Biru, instead of being pleased, grew angry. She questioned whom Shang Bin was accusing of feigning generosity. Startled, he explained that he wasn't referring to her, but to Zhang Xuan. According to Shang Bin, if he didn't have money yet treated others to a meal, he was making a fool of himself and tarnishing the reputation of teachers. In response, Zhang Xuan clarified that he wasn't the one treating. It was Shen Biru. This revelation left Shang Bin in shock, realizing that she was the one testing him. He couldn't believe it considering he had been inviting her to meals every day, yet she never agreed. As she echoed the words Shang Bin used to accuse the person treating them, insinuating that she was faking generosity, Shang Bin attempted to clarify that he didn't mean her. From behind, Tao Xiong suggested he immediately pay the bill to resolve the situation. Shang Bin, hoping to impress Shen Biru with his generosity, placed a bag of gold coins on the table, intending to cover the cost. However, she firmly rejected his offer insisting on paying her own bill to avoid any perception of feigned generosity. She further explained that her jade pendant, valued at least 5,000 gold coins, would be left in Mr. W.U.'s care until she could return with the money. In contrast, Shang Bin turned to Chao Xiong, expressing confusion about the unexpected turn of events and seeking advice on their next steps. While this was unfolding, Zhang Xuan intervened, advising Shen Biru not to pawn such a valuable item for a meal that wasn't worth its value. 
he expressed concern about her potentially being scammed by handing over money like that. Mr. Wu, angered by the use of the term scam, retorted that Hong Tian House had maintained honesty with all its customers and warned him that if he didn't clarify his statement, he shouldn't expect to leave the establishment that day. Shang Bin and Chao Xiong, observing this, were pleased to see Mr. Wu addressing the matter, anticipating trouble for Zhang Xuan. Meanwhile, she was astonished by Zhang Xuan's audacity in accusing Hong Tian House, a powerful establishment, in public, and she questioned whether he was inviting trouble upon himself. On the contrary, Zhang Xuan decided to forego formalities and began to expose Mr. Wu's deceptive practices. He started by revealing that the preparation of violet savage bear meat typically involved soaking the bear in violet flowers for three days. However, Mr. Wu had taken it out for frying after only half a day, rendering the dish less effective in terms of its medicinal properties, despite maintaining a similar texture. As this revelation unfolded, other customers in the restaurant gathered to witness the situation after hearing that Mr. Wu was engaging in deceptive practices. Continuing his exposure, Zhang Xuan went on to clarify that the Hong Hu Mandarin fish, which Mr. Wu advertised as wild Mandarin fish, was not what it seemed. However, in reality they were farm-raised, as evidenced by the small tail fins of the fish. Mr. Wu was furious because he had made these changes without the boss's knowledge, and he argued that even professional gourmets wouldn't be able to tell the difference. He couldn't admit the truth, as it would ruin both him and the reputation of Hong Tian House. In a desperate attempt to salvage the situation, he insisted that the dishes were as advertised and demanded evidence. In response to this challenge, Zhang Xuan picked up a jar and questioned whether the bottle of liquor inside was truly drunk immortal. Without hesitation, he dropped the liquor on the floor. As Mr. Wu wondered about Zhang Xuan's actions, he declared that the liquor was indeed worth 1,200 gold coins. To demonstrate, he threw a cigar into the liquor, causing it to catch fire and fill the room with smoke. Confused customers wondered about the strange odor, and Zheng Xuan explained that it was the unmistakable scent of green crag liquor. While drunk immortal was beneficial for the body, green crag liquor was not, and the foul odor served as undeniable proof. Following the exposure of the deceptive practices at the restaurant, a wave of anger surged among the customers, leading them to demand refunds for years of being served fraudulent dishes and fake drunk immortals. Mr. Wu found himself in a state of tension, grappling with the realization that Zhang Xuan, whom he dismissed as incompetent, had unveiled the deception. He questioned how Zhang Xuan, whom he considered to be good for nothing, could discern that the drunk immortal was counterfeit and pondered if he possessed gourmet expertise. Mr. Wu was also fearful of the potential repercussions if Elder Hong Hao were to discover the truth, anticipating unfavorable consequences for himself. In the midst of this chaos, Chao Xiong and Shang Bin were left bewildered as the situation unraveled unfavorably for them. Mr. Wu, reflecting on how his attempt to assist them had backfired, grew frustrated when they inquired about the unfolding events. In response, he sternly warned them, expressing disbelief at their audacity to question, and shouted for them to leave the premises immediately, forbidding them from returning. However, Shang Bin started engaging in a heated argument with him, claiming the latter had lost his sanity. Sensing that the situation was escalating, Chao Xiong wisely advised Shang Bin that it would be prudent to leave and defuse the tension. Meanwhile, acknowledging the need to settle the bill, Zhang Xuan suggested to Shen Biru that they should also make their exit. Shen Biru, impressed by his discerning palate, speculated that his underperformance in the academy might be attributed to his unconventional pursuit of becoming a gourmet. As they left the restaurant, Zhang Xuan couldn't contain his joy at the Library of Heavenly Path's ability to reveal the flaws and dishes upon tasting. Meanwhile, she lagged behind and had to hurry to catch up with him. Expressing her gratitude for his assistance, she clarified that the previous meal couldn't be considered her treat due to the unforeseen circumstances and proposed treating him again in the future. However, Zhang Xuan, taken aback by the suggestion, hesitated and jokingly remarked that he valued his life, considering the complications that could arise from sharing a meal with a beautiful lady and the potential pursuit from admirers. In the meantime, she became irritated after he rejected her offer for a meal, feeling a sense of embarrassment akin to begging when she had invited him. Zhang Xuan, acknowledging that he had other matters to attend to, expressed his intention to leave. However, their departure was interrupted by the sudden shout of Shang Bin, who warned him not to entertain any thoughts of escaping. Shen Biru intervened, inquiring about his intentions, but despite her presence, he insisted that the conflict between him and Zhang Xuan was a personal matter and proceeded to challenge him, urging him to face the duel like a man instead of hiding behind a woman. Zhang Xuan, maintaining his composure, claimed that it was one of his capabilities 
and provocatively suggested that if Shang Bin was capable, he should find someone to shield behind as well. These words struck him like an arrow to his heart, and pondered why Zheng Xuan didn't react like a typical man to his taunt, questioning whether Zheng Xuan felt no shame in hiding behind a woman. However, Zheng Xuan nonchalantly informed Shen Biru that he would leave the situation to her to handle because he had other matters to attend to. Although she was taken aback by Zhang his response, he, as a time traveler, had witnessed similar situations before and felt no shame in avoiding problems that others could resolve. Meanwhile, Shang Bin issued a warning for Zhang Xuan to stop or face dire consequences, even threatening to kill him. In a menacing turn of events, Shang Bin summoned the sky-shattering lion, a fierce beast with glowing red eyes, its powerful presence shaking the ground. As the sky-shattering lion prepared to attack, Shang Bin offered enticing rewards to it, including daily delicacies and the coveted AccuPoint soothing pill from his grandmother. Shen Biru interjected, questioning the morality of such actions and reminding him of the severe consequences of killing a fellow academy member. However, Shang Bin responded with a fabricated story, claiming that Zhang Xuan had initiated the threat, prompting the sky-shattering lion to defend him. He asserted that it was an act of self-defense and questioned how others could dispute this version of events. Following his loud command, he ordered the sky-shattering lion to attack Zhang Xuan. In response, the lion became highly aggressive, its sharp teeth exposed, charging towards Zhang Xuan with a roaring intensity. While Shen Biru expressed concern for him, he attempted to hold her back. After the beast attacked Zhang Xuan, she was deeply upset, falling to the ground and blaming herself. Shang Bin, observing no movement, assumed Zhang Xuan had been killed and promptly taunted Shen Biru for being too late to intervene. Tao Xiong, shocked by the scene, questioned the unfolding situation. Shang Bin insisted that everything had gone according to plan, dismissing his panic. However, when he urged them to look carefully, Shang Bin, initially claiming Zhang Xuan was already dead, was left astonished. The sky-shattering lion, supposed to be aggressive, was now obedient to Zhang Xuan, behaving like his pet. Shang Bin found this unbelievable, as the lion was his grandfather's beast, questioning how a simple touch could change its demeanor. In an attempt to regain control, he ordered the beast to attack Zhang Xuan and offered him any food he desired as a reward. To his bewilderment, the beast ignored the command and instead affectionately rubbed its face on his arm. Annoyed by the commotion, he commanded the sky-shattering lion to quiet Shang Bin, prompting the beast to growl menacingly at him. Perplexed, Shang Bin questioned the beast's intentions. The beast instantly attacked him with a powerful force, sending him flying several meters away until he collided with a wall, and Chao Xiong hurriedly approached him, expressing concern about his well-being. Shang Bin, overwhelmed with despair over the fate of his grandfather's pet, was in tears. On the contrary, Zhang Xuan praised the beast for its effective action, and the beast reciprocated with affectionate purring. Upon witnessing this, Shen Biru inquired about how he managed to control the beast. However, Zhang Xuan humorously expressed that the sky-shattering lion was easy to communicate with, suggesting that perhaps it found him more handsome. She was stunned by this response, thinking of the lion as a savage beast and she believed that the term handsome should only apply to others of its kind. And, when it came to being handsome, Shang Bin surpassed him. After bidding farewell, Zhang Xuan commanded the sky-shattering lion to return as well. As he departed, he felt a sense of satisfaction knowing that the Library of the Heavenly Path allowed him to understand the weaknesses of a savage beast. And by addressing some of its traumas, he gained control over it. Suddenly, she halted him, expressing her curiosity about how he managed to make the sky-shattering lion listen to him. Zhang Xuan, with a slightly frustrated expression, voiced his desire to live a long life, fearing that being with her might jeopardize his chances of surviving the next day. He requested to be excused, but Shen Biru took offense to his words, prompting him to make a cute face, acknowledging his mistake, and asking once more to be allowed to leave. Amused by his antics, Shen Biru calmed down, permitted him to go, and mentioned she would seek him out the next day. Zhang Xuan, however, remained confused. On the other hand, in the Hongqin house, Elder Hong Hao, the owner, was reprimanding Mr. Wu for daring to alter the contents of the dishes secretly to maximize profits. Don't forget to like and comment for the next part. Join our Discord for the name of the book and subscribe for more videos from us.